Please, thanks very much. Death Valley later on tonight. But we start between the hedges. It's ESPN's College Football, presented by Xfinity. It is the SEC on ESPN. And it is always a terrific game day scene here in Athens. South Carolina makes their way to Sanford to take on the Bulldogs of Georgia. Hi again, everyone. Bob Wachusen here with Dan Orlovsky. Allison Williams will join us in just a moment. Georgia, they obviously have college football playoff hopes down the road. Plenty out in front of them still. We've seen some of the nation's best. From what you've seen, how do they stack up? Oh, they're right in the mix. And this is a team that expects to be on a collision course for December 7 in the SEC title game. But they've become a program under Kirby Smart with long-term vision and short-term focus. And I promise you, with South Carolina coming in here today, they will have Kirby Smart and this football team for Georgia's full attention. 5-0 number three in the nation but Allison still some concerns for Kirby's part yeah Georgia has the fifth best rush defense in the country they're the only team to not give up a rushing TD but Kirby Smart is still apprehensive about how good they are he sees some weak spots in this defense and he wonders are we that good or maybe we just haven't faced a team good enough in the run game committed to really running the ball against us he thinks they will face that today in South Carolina he said they're big they're physical they have a good run scheme and he said if our front can control the run game it will be a huge key in this matchup well will most champs Gamecocks won the toss and deferred their option to the second half so they will put the dogs on the field first in his fourth season at South Carolina and still trying to get this program among the SEC's elite to run the football it helps to have this group up front yeah they are the traditional bulldozing Mulder type of offensive line you see the weight and they play to that strength they are going to get a bunch of double teams try to consistently change the line of scrimmage and that's why they'll hand it off so many times that group paves the way for DeAndre Swift who is number one in the SEC and yards per carry. He averages seven yards every time he touches the ball on the ground. And they'll start with Swift. And just a massive humanity that moves the pile for about four yards on first down. They change the line of scrimmage for their head coach. Well, and that's the way Kirby wants to play football. He wants to impose this Georgia football program's will. You can see it with the size of the offensive line. They come out with an extra tackle playing the tight end position kind of sending a message hey this this is exactly who we're going to be all day first time in georgia history that they are 5-0 for the third consecutive season to start the year from long throw lawrence cager pulls it in and he's got a first down how about the keys for jake Fromm? well for this offense they've struggled a little bit the past couple of weeks let's go out and get some points early on and listen this is a team we talked about the run game they're gonna have to get the ball to the outside to eventually win this sec title south carolina is going to play with some aggressive style on their back end defensively as the quarterback for jake Fromm, you make sure that you burn them in attacking those safeties and now they've got six offensive linemen in front of deandre swift They'll go play action off of it. Fromm, long throw to the sideline, and he connects with Tyler Simmons. Game 14, and another Georgia first down. See the feet right on the sidelines. Beautiful throw by Jake Fromm. Only where his guy could catch it, left foot down. Good completion, but I love the fact that they brought Simmons down in motion. We've talked about some of those outside guys really need to step forward well they've struggled first man what do they do to help them short motion get the press off and then it allows them to get that free release for that deep out route swift breaking tackles powers his way down to the 42 yard line for a gain of seven more that's 
his per carry average. Yeah, you kind of like the fact that South Carolina looks, at least defensively, that they're trying to punch or rip at that football. Obviously, that Will Muschamp has said, we're going to have to try and steal the ball somehow possession-wise today, and they're going to challenge Swift and his ability to hold on to that football in contact. Well, the Gamecocks start off the year at 2-3. and three. They've lost two of their last three. And it's Swift again, right up the middle. He's got a first down. But Will Muschamp told us earlier this week, we're minus two for the season in the giveaway takeaway ratio can't win yeah and i'd say that today for them to win this football game because they're good enough <laughs> is they got to get to plus two today they got to get to plus two on the turnovers and not only that bob but they you got to do something with it right if you get those turnovers you've got to turn them into 14 points to have this chance to come in here and pull an upset swift trots in motion Rom looks his way, wants the check down, and he hits Swift. A gain of a couple. T.J. Brunson. Pretty good job in the open field on DeAndre Swift. You know, we talk about some of the great backs in college football, and obviously Jonathan Stewart at Wisconsin's brought up, and then people go, well, can he catch the ball to the backfield? DeAndre Swift, to me, watching tape, is a guy that can do that more than people think or expect. Get, get him out, run some routes, beat the linebacker. Really nice job of setting it up inside, breaking away. Little zone read to Swift. And here's a big chance for South Carolina now. You know they're going to sacrifice some yards between the 20s, but when you get this offense in third down and medium, third down and long, can you get off the field and get a stop? Yeah, and that's going to be the, 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 the matchup today for South Carolina defensively on third down is how do you want to go after a kid in Jake Fromm who leads the country and starts? He has seen everything you want to throw at him. What Georgia likes to do is get empty backfield, and they don't even give Jake Fromm, hey, you've got to throw it here versus man or here versus zone. They give him five guys to throw to, he deciphers or eliminates guys before the snap and then goes through his progressions. Here comes a blitz. Cromwell protected. Now the pocket starts to collapse, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Kingsley and Igbari brought him down. Fourth down and about six, and they are going to go, it looks like, to the crowd favorite. Rodrigo Blankenship to try and kick it. Well, they bring a late safety blitz, so you got five rushers at Fromm. They do a nice job of playing sticky man coverage, but really good job by Jake Fromm, one. No sack, get forward, and then an excellent job by the coverage of South Carolina. Blankenship has it missed this season, including a couple from 50-plus, this one from 50 even. Certainly has the distance. And it's got the accuracy as well. Rodrigo Blankenship stays perfect. And the dog strike first. Will Georgia be one of those final four? They are certainly off to the kind of start that their head coach wants to see. 5-0 and to begin the year. Although South Carolina, they doing what they have to do if they're going to have a chance in this game. Shorten the game. Mm -hmm. Get stops on third down and force the dogs to settle for threes instead of sevens. Easier said than done, no doubt. And kind of like the thing of, hey, we can just make this offense kick field goals. That's going to allow us to stay in this game and take advantage of some matchups they may have for South Carolina offensively. And Shai Smith will let this one go through the end zone for a touchback. It'll come out to the 25-yard line. No mystery as to what South Carolina's chance is going to be offensively today. Give it to Tavian Feaster and Rico Dowdle and hope that they can control things. Yeah, both coming off really good football games. We had South Carolina week one. They were a zone run scheme. Now they've changed to a, a, an offense that wants to pull a bunch of people, get these big offensive linemen out in space. But the thing is, they got to commit to it. That's why they got to stay in the game. They got to be able to run it for four quarters. Sideways, if not backwards pass to Sean Smith. That'll be a running play. And that will pick up a yard. Tay Crowder came over to make the stop. Aziz Ojolari there as well. Second down and nine. Play action for Ryan Holinsky. Long throw to the sideline. 
coming over the head of Chavis Dawkins. How about the keys today for Holinsky? Well, for the young freshman who's had some bright moments to start this season for himself playing, you're going to get some one-on-ones with the run game. you got to hurt Georgia in that. Find Brian Edwards. He'll probably be the best player when your football team is on the field on offense. And then you play with so much tempo. you got to play fast, but have a slow mind in a difficult environment. Edwards is the closest to the tackle box and the trips to the bottom of your screen. And there he goes in motion. Third down and nine. They set the screen up. Coming back to make the catch is Edwards. And he'll get gang tackled at the 31-yard line. About four yards shy of the first down. J.R. Reed, the first dog to get there. So it's a three and out to start for South Carolina. He has now set the record, has Brian Edwards, a school record for consecutive games with a reception. Has a catch in every game he's played in. But conservative, as you would imagine, to start the game for South Carolina, and they go three and out. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's a credit to Georgia's defense. I mean, Jermaine Johnson, number 11, came off the edge, really changed the throw from Ryan Halitsky that made Edwards just step back, and that's what allowed the pursuit by Georgia's defense. Very fast, fair catch made by Dominic Blaylock all the way back to about his own 11-yard line. So Joseph Charlton just changed field position, 58-yard punt. ESPN College Football is presented by Xfinity. Get the ultimate in-home Wi-Fi experience with Xfinity XFi. And in part by Mazda. Feel alive. Slightly different look. 90 years in the making for Sanford Stadium. But that was a shot all the way back. October 12, 1929. Georgia pulled off a big upset. 15 to nothing over Yale. And Catfish Smith scored all 15 points for the dogs. Are we sure that wasn't De Niro? It, when they come out with the Catfish like De Niro. Smith story, I think it'll be a young Bob De Niro that can play him. Screen out to Cager, rather Robertson, to start this drive for Georgia. As South Carolina significantly changed field position to start. Well, talk about Jake Fromm. I would say he's the best quarterback in America connecting the dots. Watch how he sees to the right. Okay, the defender's going to flow. Come back across. That means someone else has to vacate. Now another defender has to leave. That's where the football goes. See how I he mean, feels this linebacker slough underneath. That means nobody could be outside. I could throw the ball to the perimeter. Easy pitch and catch. He's the best quarterback of understanding why he's doing what with the football. He's got James Cook to his right. And the shotgun. Look at the cup. Cook looks to turn the corner and gets strung out to about the 20-yard line. A couple of yards shy of a first down. Third and short after we check in with Matt Barrett. Good afternoon. Time now for the CarMax Big Play Update. We'll check in on Illinois and Michigan. Hassan Haskins. Tough run, 25 yards for him. First career rushing touchdown. Michigan up early, 7-0 over on ABC. All right, Matt, third down and one. As we approach the midway point of the first quarter. It's DeAndre Swift. It looks as if he edges his way just far enough to pick up the first down. But get back to Jake Fromm for a moment. Yep. All the tape that we watched on him this week. Do you think he is the best processor oh. of information of any quarterback in college football? There's no doubt about it. I would say that he is a professional with his mind already. You're not going to be sitting in NFL rooms and hear them talk about why he does. Well, why did you throw the ball? I saw the safety go over the top and the corner came underneath and the defensive end went inside, so the ball had to go here. Uh, he's just really good at understanding, connecting dots at the defense and why I want to throw the football where I am. And Samir White. Gets him second down and short after a game of about eight. Zamir White, this is, you know, De DeAndre Swift is their guy, but this is the next guy for Georgia. Watch the physicality that he run, wants to run the football with. But I want to get back to Fromm and talking like everyone references the offense, the style. But when you have a quarterback, you don't have to throw it 45 times when you know he's going to throw it to the right place all the time, right? You don't need to because he's going to have way many way less misses both mentally and physically than a lot of co co college quarterbacks. Samir White changes direction and loses a couple of yards so it will be a third down after T.J. Brunson gets a tackle for loss. 
Guys, after that opening drive, Jake from processing where South Carolina is bringing the pressure from and going over it with his offensive lineman. He took a knee next to O-line coach Sam Pittman for the majority of that time on the sidelines and went over each with each guy who they need to pick up. He sees everything on the field and he relays it so clearly to everybody else. That's what James Coley said. So it was Jake Fromm and Jimbo Fisher are the only two guys he's ever been around that knew where everybody was or needed to be. As Fromm is well protected here over the middle, right through the hands of Eli Wolf, the tight end. Couldn't draw it up any better if you're Georgia. And the tight end dropped a wide open third down conversion. Well, South Carolina defensively decides to play man again. Jake Fromm, another beautiful ball. And it's just Eli Wolf stumbling a little bit, falling away from it. You really want to go attack that football and catch it with your face mask. And a big drop for Georgia's offense, but credit South Carolina playing some man coverage and challenging these Georgia receivers on the outside. It's a big break for the Gamecocks. Let's see if they get some field position as Jake Camarda will punt. And that is a laser beam that's going to go over the head of Edwards. Will it reach the end zone? It goes sideways to the seven yard line. A 67 yard punt for the sophomore, Jake Camarda. Wow. Matt Berry with the studio update, checking in on the Red River Showdown. Fourth and one, Sooners' first possession of the game. Jalen Hurts to CD Land. They just forced a Texas punt, have the ball in Longhorns' territory. Well, deep in their own end, Matt, South Carolina, as Georgia flipped the field, and the Dogs have a 3 0 lead. Bob Lashusen alongside Dan Orlovsky. Allison Williams with us as well. Jake Camarda's career long 66 yard punt in South Carolina deep. Rico Dowdle looking for a cutback lane. That's a good run. Out close to the 13 yard line to pick up six. Well, they bring double pullers and watch Dowdle's patience, right? He's waiting. Okay, where's my puller? Where's my puller? Put my foot in the ground and get north and south. Really good job by Dowdle. Stringing it out, finding the seam and going. Battle again breaks a tackle in the backfield. It's about a yard and a half shot in the first down. Monty Rice brought him down, but Tyler Clark had a chance at a tackle for loss and missed it. Olinsky over the middle, tipped, and almost intercepted with a flag thrown to the secondary. Richard LeCount off the carom had a chance at a pick. We'll have to check the marker. I think they might get J.R. Reed with a little hold on Muse. Pass interference, defense number 20. The penalty will place the ball at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. That's... It's a shame we're bringing up J.R. Reed's name for the first time with a penalty call because we sat with him yesterday as well and what an impressive guy in terms of being the quarterback of this Georgia defense. Yeah, I mean he's the guy who South Carolina plays with so much tempo. He's going to have to be the guy that gets the call from their defensive coordinator Dan Lanning personnel down in distance. Then he becomes the communicator to everybody on defense within six or seven seconds getting the proper call. Battle. It's outside and gets wrestled down after a gain of two by Monty Rice. You can tell both of these football teams are playing a little bit the same defensively. Hey, we're going to get in your face, get to the line of scrimmage, play some man coverage, and make you make difficult, contested plays both in the run game and pass game. Actually only gave Dowdle a gain of one, so it's second down and nine. Empty backfield for Ryan Holinsky. Two and two as a starter. Since taking over when Jake Bentley suffered the Liz Frank injury in the opener. Holinsky, high throw, incomplete, broken up. He threw it just a bit behind Kyle Markwood. You guys see Ryan Holinsky wearing number three, and that's a number that means more to him than probably any of us can even imagine. It's the number worn by his late brother Tyler, the Washington State quarterback, who took his own life in January of 2018. For Ryan's senior year, he changed his number from four to three. He also got a tattoo on his right forearm. So every time he 
snaps the football, he knows that Tyler is with him. His parents are also with him. Kim and Mark moved from Southern California to South Carolina to be closer to Ryan. Every time Ryan throws a touchdown pass, you see that three up to the sky. He's looking for a third down conversion here. And he finds Edwards on a deep crossing route, a big third down conversion as Holinsky took the shot, and Mom and Dad love the intensity. Guys, Kim and Mark have come to Columbia, and the community has really embraced them and their mission to change the conversation about mental health issues among student athletes. It's Holinsky's hope, and you'll see several guys on the team and throughout the South Carolina community wearing the bracelets, wearing the Holinsky Hope motto, and it's really a, a great cause that this entire community and team has rallied behind. And the courage that they as a family have shown. It's Tavia Feaster. Picks up about a yard and a half. That was something that Will Muschamp brought up, and I thought it was so well said. So you talk to Kim, and she says the most difficult thing about trying to be a voice for mental health is that every time we go out and speak to groups, we have to relive Tyler's suicide all over again. That's Josh Bann. He's about four yards shy of the first down, and he said it just takes such courage as a family to be willing to relive that tragedy over and over again and not try and put it back in the ball. But they are they have made that commitment as a family to I, do I, so I think in the most, Tyler's memory. The most impressive part of it is there's a catch by Nick Muse. And he's got another first down. I think the most impressive part of it is a lot of people suffer tragedy, right? And they say things, but they never actually put the words into action. And the whole Kalinske family has not allowed it to just be wordplay. They have totally embraced it and put it into action. And I can't fathom, to your point, Bob, the courage it takes almost on a daily basis to consistently make that decision, right? And it's, it's an incredibly inspiring experience. Play clock down to six. Kalinske change something at the line of scrimmage but that threw the timing off it'll be a false start false start offense number 84 five yard penalty a minute first down a couple of big third down conversions for a south carolina offense that after a 66-yard punt were pinned inside their own 10-yard line. At the very least, getting across the 50, success on this drive. Play action for Holinsky. He's going to take a deep shot down the sideline. He drops it in perfectly. Brian Edwards, that's a touchdown for the Gamecocks. It's a 93-yard touchdown drive to give South Carolina the lead. For the young freshman handling the environment, they move the pocket for him a little bit. They understand that Brian Edwards is one-on-one -on -one in man coverage. You go give the big ball down the field, let him go make the play. Family celebrates together. South Carolina on top. Coca-Cola invites you to share a Coke while tuning into this upcoming matchup tonight. It's Penn State, Iowa. That's tonight at 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Can that Iowa defense stop a high-powered Penn State offense? Something's got to give in that game. We saw Penn State last week get off to a really quick start and kind of get caught in the mud a bit. Yeah, they might have been looking forward after that 21-0 jump. Penn State's defense is just so good. They got some playmakers on offense. That will be a big game in Kinnick. 
into the back of the end zone for a touchback from Will Tommy. Let's go back to Matt Barrett. Okay, guys, we're heading to Knoxville to check in on Tennessee and Mississippi State. Tim Jordan from 15 yards out, and the Tennessee defense just picked off Mississippi State. They've got the ball up 7-0 on the SEC Network. South Carolina, another SEC matchup against Georgia between the hedges, has the 7-3 lead. So now a little adversity mm -hmm. to start the game for the Dogs. Let's see how Jake Fromm responds. DeAndre Swift up the middle. Spins for a first down. Israel Mukwamu brought him down, but not before DeAndre Swift picked up 12. Well, it's really the jet motion. Watch the right side of your screen. That linebacker, Ernest Jones, just hesitate for a second. That allows Swift that cutback lane and then to get back outside. Good use of the jet motion by Georgia's offense. Pretty good one-on-one -on -one tackle for a corner on a big-time running back as well by Mukwamu. Helps when you're 210 pounds and 6'4". Prom hesitates and then throws it away. Part of the reason why Jake Fromm in this Georgia offense only has one sack, right? An RPO where you make the decision, okay, I'm not giving the run. Now it has become pass mode, but the pass isn't there. So many quarterbacks would panic in that moment, or force it in, whatnot. Fromm, just throw it over someone's head, and you'll be fine. You look for a screen here. Georgia likes to do perimeter screens on second down. Instead, they'll hand it to Swift. Third down and about five. Now, as we head to third down here, Georgia's had some offensively on third down. And what South Carolina has done is said, we don't, in essence, we don't respect or fear your perimeter guys on the outside. We're going to play man to man. And Georgia last series did a nice job of getting in some bunch splits to help guys get off press. You're going to see another one at the top of our screen. You're going to see those receivers tighter together right here. See if you can get some in and out type of releases to help man to man coverage. Someone has to win. From pitch and catch to James Cook. He always seems to know exactly where he wants to go with the football. Well, the big thing is they put James Cook on the outside as a running back, and South Carolina kept Israel Mukwamu out there, the cornerback. You told Jake Fromm before the snap, we're playing zone coverage. We're changing it up. We're not going to play man. He takes the snap. You're in soft zone coverage. Ball's out of his hand before James Cook ever turns around. James Cook ever turns around. Easy first down. Play action for Fromm. Long throw to the sideline. The freshman George Pickens has a first down. Picks up ten and a half. And that should take us to the end of the first quarter. And it will. Georgia on the move. South Carolina with the lead. Really good start between the hedges. Glad you can be with us on a Saturday in the SEC. We are between the hedges. It's ESPN's college football presented by Xfinity. And it's the SEC on ESPN. Bob Oshusen, Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams set for the start of the second quarter. South Carolina with their longest scoring drive of the season. Put the only touchdown on the board so far, but now Georgia in business. For the first down at the Gamecocks 37 to start the second quarter. Andre Swift. It's outside and is brought down at the 30-yard line. That might be a horse collar tackle on T.J. Brunson. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number six. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So if you get up on the collar and you pull that player down immediately with that thrust to the ground it's going to be 15 yards and tj brunson cost his team big time it's a first down inside the 15 yard line now for georgia from 
the shoulder fake. Sidearms one. Down inside the five-yard line of Blaylock. It's first and goal. That's a quarterback getting to number three in man coverage. They try to double move. That wasn't there. He came to number two, crossing. That's not there. And then, like, this drop-down sidearm, a little Matthew Stafford, ex-Georgia Bulldog type of throw, and accurate gets the ball down to the two-yard line. four-yard line still first and goal for Georgia Andre Swift turned back at the goal line it'll be second down and goal at the one RJ Roderick the safety came up to help now watch number 10 right side of your screen watch Roderick the safety with the help of Ernest Jones number 53 both get low gain leverage and make sure Swift and his legs can't get in. Another try for Swift. And he's in this time for the Georgia touchdown. This is all DeAndre Swift's right. He's gonna get stopped by DJ1 right there. But the strength to get into the end zone, leg drive and power. So it gets that touchdown for Georgia. 10 touchdowns last year for Swift. Already five rushing touchdowns now this season. 180th consecutive made point after for Rodrigo Blankenship. Makes it 10-7 Georgia. birthday for Sanford Stadium and it is always as good a scene as there is in college football between the hedges Georgia takes the lead 10-7 now let's see how South Carolina responds after a drive the last time they had the football that has to build an inordinate amount of confidence I would think for a freshman quarterback. And it's exactly what they want to do commit to the run get some good yardage in it and then find Brian Edwards in one-on-one -on -one situations down the field. Lincoln ship through the back of the end zone. Back to Matt Barry. Guys, all blue early on, Michigan and Illinois. Shea Patterson, 25 yards to Luke Schoonmaker. Only his second career catch at Michigan. 14-0 early against Illinois. <laughs> about as flawless as could be on that last drive starts off with a straight drop back on this drive and over the middle he's got Edwards and Edwards has collapsed at about the 31 yard line but picks up six guys Kirby Smart knew that South Carolina's tempo would present some challenges for his defense it has but so has their shifts and motions so he made some adjustments in the back end of his defense and reminded his guys you have to trust the call and respect your teammates enough to do their job continue to cover them our pressure is coming No pressure that time. Although Holinsky with a check down, at least a couple of yards shy of the first down to Edwards. So it's going to be third down and two. Timeout called by the Georgia sideline just snap. before the snap. Timeout, timeout, Georgia. First timeout of the half. A big third down when we come back. Yeah, this is why Georgia had to take that timeout. Look at the communication on their back end, right? They're trying to set to this empty set and then watch 89 Brian Edwards move across. Walter Grant's in the wrong location. And as that motion comes over, you're in a bad place right there if you're Georgia. So 
all that communication by their defense, and then the motion forced Kirby Smart to make that timeout. Recognized by the Georgia sideline. Alinsky, sliding attempt on third down and short is on time for Nick Muse. He's got the first down. Alinsky holding that left knee slow to get up. He took a shot, limping back into the huddle. Can't be more impressed with Ryan Holinsky as he takes that shot from Mark Webb, number 23, but the ball got out. You certainly hope he's okay because he's been so impressive to start this game for South Carolina. He may not be able to defend himself. They may have to call a timeout just to get Holinsky off the field. He's going to hand it off to Dowdle. And Dowdle's going to find some room and get nearly to midfield. He picks up nine, but the question I would have, Dan, from the South Carolina sideline as he tries to run this off, if all of a sudden some big body from Georgia is after Holinsky, will he be able to defend himself? Well, we're going to find out, because I'd imagine Kirby Smart will come after him, right? Respectfully and in, in between fair play, but try and test the knee. Dowdle instead. And it looks like he might have the first down. And this affects your play calling, right? As we see to carry in Jorner, South Carolina's backup quarterback. This affects your play calling right now if you're Brian McClendon in South Carolina, okay? We, we want to get some yardage, but we how, how is our quarterback feeling? He's gonna throw it here. Swing pass, Dowdle, submarines for about three. Brought down by the freshman, Kobe Dean. You know, like I said, I'd expect Kirby Smart to, to pressure him. Let, let me see if, if you can move on a knee that might have been banged or whatnot. Tavian Feaster grinds out about a yard. Ryan Holinsky's got eight straight completions going right now, off to a 9 and 11 start. But they are faced with another third down, third and six. And Cox with three for four on third down. Four-man rush. The catch made just shy of the first down by Markway. But he reaches the ball out, and they're going to mark him a half-yard shot. I'm not sure if he was down. This may be a spot they want to review. He's not down. They're going to quarterback sneak it with flags everywhere. We'll have to sort this out. Part of the snap, false start. Offense number 76. Everything's third down. And I don't, that's why tempo sometimes hurts you. Like, there's no, there's more that you can gain from not going fast than you can gain from going fast. If you felt, because you're it's on your sideline too. That play by Mark May was on your sideline. Someone had to see and at least get word down. This is really close. We don't have to go super fast. Let us take a look at that. And it ends up hurting South Carolina, which would have been a first down. South Carolina beat the replay booth. Dominic Blaylock with a fair catch at the 13-yard line. But had replay, had an opportunity to take a look at that reach by Markway. It might have been a first down. And Ryan Holinsky is heading into the injury tent to get looked at. That is must-watch television. Those Saturdays in the South are so good. And we are in the South on a college football Saturday. Georgia back to the offense. Samir White finds a lane, gets tripped up, but he's got a first down. DJ Wanham saved an even bigger play than the 11 and a half yard gain. And there is to carry on Joyner warming up on the South Carolina sideline as they're still taking a look at Ryan Holinsky. Joyner would be the third quarterback of the season for South Carolina. Jake Bentley injured in the opener. Holinsky took over. Joyner started the season as a wide receiver, but had to move back to quarterback to protect Holinsky as the backup. White, this time met right at the line by Ernest Jones. Still, he's able to power forward for about four and a half yards.
The inter interesting thing for South Carolina is, okay, if it's not Holinsky and say he can't go, to carry on Joyner is a completely different skill set, right? Like, it is going to be much more zone read, designed quarterback run, get the ball outside with an athlete, and that might be something that Georgia is not completely ready for defensively. Again, Samir White. And again, it's a dog's first down. Samir White again on the carry. Now you talk about changing the line of scrimmage. Just watch the red where the ball snapped and then the change of that line of scrimmage. First contact four or five yards downfield. This Georgia offensive line is Maulers. Brown with all day. Throws it behind his intended receiver as he tried to find White. Ernest Jones was there in coverage. Second down and 10. He had White in a one on one matchup on the linebacker. Perfect play for the coverage that South Carolina decided to run and use that. Right there is something that you very rarely see from Jake Fromm, and that's just a missed throw with his location. I mentioned it before, second and long. This is a really big screen down, all kinds of screens, though, not just to the running back, but maybe to a perimeter outside. Screen down for Georgia's offense. DeAndre Swift this time. Pulled down from behind, shy of the 40-yard line by Kobe Smith. So it's third down again. I've got to imagine that South Carolina, Will Muschamp are going to line up and play man coverage here. They played soft zone last time. Didn't work. Jake Fromm picked them apart. I expect them to get up into these receivers' faces and play some man coverage. And for Georgia, finding someone in a matchup that you like to win. Low snap. Fromm. Up the seam, trying to scoop it up as Cager. And on the field, they will say that is a clean catch, though Cager comes up hurt. Nice job by Cager going down, getting those elbows together to make sure that ball never got the opportunity to squirt through. Picked up 18 yards, but now Lawrence Cager, who has probably been the most consistent wide receiver and biggest downfield threat for Georgia, he's on the sideline. While on the other side, Ryan Holinsky's on the bike, trying to stay warm for the next possession for South Carolina. From again, well protected, takes a shot down the sideline, incomplete. Laying out was the freshman George Pickens. The second attempt. Listen, Pickens is going to have a really nice career here, but watch him widen right away. Like, the first thing he does is go towards the sideline versus J.C. Horn, and there's nowhere for Jake Fromm to throw that football. That football has to be absolutely perfect. You want to squeeze that corner, squeeze and fight back to the middle of the field, and then you get the opportunity as a quarterback to do your fading him to the sideline. Swing pass to Cook. Rallying is the defense for South Carolina. Sherrod Green got there first. It's a loss of a couple. And now it's third down and a long 12. And I like the fact that you brought up Sherrod Green on that tackle. He's the third linebacker for South Carolina. They've gone to be playing three linebackers almost all the time. Because Rams college football, Absolutely, right? especially for three wide receivers because they go, wait, we, we're a team that says we want to stop the run, but we don't have the people on the field to stop the run. So they're leaving Sherrod Green out there to commit to stopping the run, but he's also good enough in their pass game and in space, and he showed it there. Georgia's three for five on third down, but third down at 12. Wide receiver hitch to Tyler Simmons. Crowd's not going to like that call. Does that set up going forward on fourth down? Aaron Sterling got him down inside the 40-yard line. This may be just out of the range of Blankenship. That might have been a design play knowing you're going for it on fourth down. I think they're going to get up to the line of scrimmage and try and get if you can see if you can get your South Carolina to jump off sides here. Well, they can't get a first down, even with an offsides call. It's fourth and six. So now they don't jump off sides, but you still have plenty of time to figure out, okay, what are you doing defensively? My expectation is you've got man-to-man. -man. You find a matchup that you like, maybe at the bottom of your screen. And Cox bring a blitz from 
Slings one down the sideline incomplete. Trying to find Demetrius Robertson. South Carolina gets a stop on downs. Five and a half minutes to go in the first half. And the South Carolina defense rises up. Time for our Aflac trivia question. The four Georgia Bulldogs that have been taken number one overall in the NFL draft. Can you name them? We'll have the answer coming up a little bit later on. Good question. That's a good. I know one. Well, you, you got to go to the history books. To I know find one. A couple of them. Good news as well with Halinski out at quarterback, gutting him through the knee injury. Pass to Shai Smith. No gain on first down, but just seeing Halinski off the bike and on the field has got to be a boost to South Carolina. But is it any surprise that the kid is tough? You know that he's physically tough. Play action. Here comes the blitz. Long throw to the sideline, and he squeezes it through. Chavis Dawkins has a first down, and Halinski gets up and fights through it again. All this his is, family has fought through. Takes the shot, and that is not normal for any quarterback, let alone a freshman to throw. You take that shot, and that ball was thrown three steps before the receiver was ever looking for it. Ryan Alinsky, listen, no longer a freshman, right? He's not playing like one. Go Dowdle, finds a cutback lane in the secondary. And he's got a game, Cox first down, and a gain of 13, brought down by J.R. Reed. South Carolina's got something there, getting to a tight end wing formation and running back to the boundary. They're collapsing one side, bringing pullers around. And do those double tight ends and tackles are doing a nice job to give that back some scenes. Committed to the run. Mm. And why not? Rico Dowdle, three more. You know, talking to both coaches this week, it's rare that both coaches will just come out and admit exactly what they're going to do. Yeah. Right? Kirby Smart said, they're going to run the football on us. You say to the South Carolina coaches, they're expecting you to run. South Carolina coach, including Coach Muschamp, says, you know, yeah, they're right. We're going to run. Little pop pass underneath. From behind the receiver by Halinski. Nick Muse couldn't haul it in. So now it will be third down. And this is this pin and pull run game for South Carolina. You're going to get a tight end and tackle. Pin down. You're going to change the pinpoint right there, and then you get those double pullers, and the back is able to follow them. Now Nick Muse, he pins the edge of the defense, and you get two pullers for Rico Dowdell to follow. This is the basis of what South Carolina's run game has become, and they do it really well. Might be four down territory. We'll see. Swing pass Caught by Shai Smith. Four yards shy of the first down. Devon Wilson made the stop for the dogs. It's a long field goal attempt or a go for it situation on fourth and four. And trying to tie the game will be Coach Muschamp as Holinsky limps off. Parker White, 7 of 9 on the season, has only misses this year from 50 and 53. So this would be a new career long. Just a shade inside of 50. It's got the distance. It's got the accuracy. How about that? A new career long for Parker White. And we are deadlocked with three minutes to go in the half. The Gamecocks fans celebrate. Let's get you the answer to our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Who are the four Georgia Bulldogs to be selected number one overall in the NFL draft? Herschel, of course, not on that list. If you know anything about the USFL, all the way back to Frank Sinkwich in 1943 through to an old teammate of yours, Matthew Stafford, uh, taking would, number one in the draft. Someone would say, I got Matthew drafted number one overall. Did you? Yeah, I mean, not. Take Certainly not on that, purpose, gotcha. but uh, be, because of being <laughs> part of a really, really substandard and poor 2008 team, 
So you're saying that the brass for the Lions said to themselves, we think we can get better at quarterback? Shocker. <laughs> they take the most talented kid in the country. Wow. Uh, so, you know, I, I just, I've known him for a long time. And he hasn't necessarily thanked me for that, which is odd. Just so you know, next year, I'm not expecting Matthew Stafford to be next to me in this booth. Uh, yeah. He's not replacing you on this job. I do not think that's breaking news. James <laughs> Cook. <laughs> Gamecocks, heavy underdog by more than three touchdowns, are more than making a game of it. Let's see what Georgia does before halftime with three minutes to go after we check in with Matt. All right, Orlowski, quit being so hard on yourself. Coming up with the Lexus Halftime Report, a little deep fried football down in Texas. We'll check in on the Red River Showdown. Plus, Tennessee trying to get a win at home. Plus, who needs to be on upset alert this afternoon? Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway join me coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report. All right, Matt, all we're ever worried about with Orlovsky is the depth of the booth, Matt, in case you're wondering. Just want to make sure he knows where the rear boundary is and how much room he has. <laughs> well done. Really well done. <laughs> Proud of your effort there. Thank you. DeAndre Swift. It's up five on first down. Guys, South Carolina loves the toughness they're seeing from their defensive line against this massive Georgia O-line. They're telling them they have to continue to be the more physical group, saying they're tall, but we have to get low, keep our hands inside, and win the war of wills up front. It's been a great start for the first few minutes here. They need to get that same level of effort and toughness for the full 60 minutes. Well, part of that is helped by number three, Javon Kinlaw, who might be one of the better SEC defensive linemen. And then Aaron Sterling, kind of old school throwback players. They'll do it dirty, they'll get physical, they'll make it a nasty football game down low inside. So not only the talented, but they've got the mindset to kind of go and counter against this Georgia offensive line. And that was Kinlaw at the bottom of the pile with the stop on Swift after only a gain of a yard. So now it's third down and four. And this is the down that is really slowed Georgia down offensively in this first half is not being able to do anything on third down in man-to-man -man coverage. They've got to find a way to get some stacks, some bunches to help releases to get hands off from these defensive backs. They clock at four. Four-man rush. Fry slings one into traffic. And a terrific catch made by Lawrence Cager for a first down to gain of 10. Really nice job by Jake Brown moving in the pocket, finding the man-to-man -to -man that had a chance to win Cager with a tough contested catch. And now with two timeouts playing with tempo is Georgia. That forces South Carolina into a defensive timeout. TJ out again this week. He's got that Achilles injury, so Ryan Clark is back, back, back with Boomer on NFL Primetime tomorrow at 7.30. Only on ESPN Plus, all the highlights and breakdowns from the day's games. To get ESPN Plus, download the app or go to ESPNplus.com. What has surprised you the most about how South Carolina has gotten this game tied? Well, I would say their run game. I you know I figured they would want to run it, but this is a almost dominant run defense for Georgia and so you never know are you actually going to be able to do that so that's been a little bit surprising I've been blown away by Helensky. I shouldn't have been because of what what I saw in tape and then their defensive willingness to go okay listen we're, we're gonna play man-to-man -man coverage we talked about it though no one on Georgia scares you on the perimeter outside no one scares you to go play man-to-man -man coverage and I think that's got to be a little concerning for Georgia and their fans is when teams want to and can play man coverage we don't necessarily have a McCole Hardman or an A.J. Green or Riley Ridley that can beat it on a consistent basis. That's Cager, one-on-one -on -one at the top of your screen. Rahm instead looks to the wide side and finds the freshman George Pickens. But South Carolina has played this defensively like an NFL game, haven't they? Keep it in front of you, no big plays shorten the game Georgia using clock here and it just keeps the game low scoring and you stay in it Rob slings one of the sideline and it's intercepted by McCrabbo he's down the sideline long strides to the pylon 
for a pick six. Jake Fromm's first pick goes the other way for a touchdown. Ken Law got the pressure. Maquamu read the throw to the sideline, and he took it to the house. 53 yards for a Gamecocks touchdown. South Carolina. Let's watch this game by the defense. They're going to crisscross on this Georgia offensive line. Kinlaw starts inside. He goes out, getting his leverage on Isaiah Wilson. And then Fromm moves. And whether he's trying to throw that ball away or not, Mukwamu's 6'4 frame long enough to go make the play. And South Carolina turns the turnover into quick points. That's what pressure can do, though. Earlier this season, you saw Israel Mukwamu, and you said, you know, he reminds me of somebody. Yeah, with his length and then his frame, he reminds me of Nandi Asimwa, who I played against in the NFL. Nandi was a corner because of the length of his arms. He was so good at getting hands on. And then we often talk about catch radius for receivers. His catch radius as a defensive back was so incredible. We saw it with Mukwamu right there. If he's not 6'4", that ball's thrown away and that touchdown never happens. But the length of him as a corner is really so unique in college football. Only a sophomore. His third career interception becomes a pick six. James Cook takes a knee. Well, this season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you to Allstate. You got to you think of your Georgia offensively. You should be going to be aggressive again right now. That's short memory. Jake Fromm, obviously, has played enough short memory. You got to try and go get some points here and reset two-minute mode. Trey Swift, plenty of room, but South Carolina expecting pass, and he blasts up the middle for about 14 yards. That stops the clock with the first down. Still two timeouts for the Dogs. Rom with a shoulder fit. Now he's out of the pocket. Long throw up the seam, and it's dropped. George Pickens couldn't scoop it off the turf top. Check that. DeAndre Swift was trying to haul that one in and just couldn't pick it up. I saw Swift do that in an earlier game. I think it was against Tennessee. He's just a traditional check down. Really good feel to go downfield because the linebackers playing underneath the offensive line gave Fromm a ton of time. You know, I, I, South Carolina's not going to give you a shot downfield right now. I think just work the boundary. Throw some outs, throw some comebacks. These corners are not going to give you a deep ball downfield. Four-man rush, well protected again. There is the deep shot down the field, and it's well overthrown. J.C. Horn was there in coverage. Crowd looking for a flag, but that looked like very good coverage from the other side more corner by Tyler Simmons. They're trying to get a double move. They want to go out with Simmons and up, but you see J.C. Horn just staying on top, and he's on top of the receiver. Now, Simmons is the guy who gives a little shove right there. But if I'm James Coley, I want to just get some easy completions, especially here on third and 10. South Carolina is not going to come up and give you the chances you had earlier in this half. They will play soft, have something going towards the sideline, and out route a deep comeback that can take advantage of the free access. From over the middle, 
That's a first down catch. Andrews got it. Let's see if they call a timeout. But the clock stopped 25 seconds to go. And now it starts to wind. And now they will call a timeout. Just a little too much time is going to come off the clock there. Even with it stopping and Cager having to shake off, I think, the earlier injury that he suffered on that deep comeback down the left sideline. We're starting off the day in the SEC. How about the game today in Death, Va in, uh, Death Valley in the SEC tonight? Supposedly going to be a big football game. I think it's starting to look good. Death Valley is alive and electric. I thought I let you all know. It's starting to let go. Yeah, like I was saying, supposedly going to be a big football game. <laughs> Florida's defense, you know, I, I'm excited to watch Florida's defense, who we also had again earlier this year. I don't think anyone's really gotten in the face of the LSU receivers. We're seeing it here with South Carolina defense today. Get in the face and get physical with them and not give easier throws, and Florida will do that. Marco Wilson, C.J. Henderson, Sean Davis, they will get in the faces of these LSU receivers and challenge them, I really think, for the first time this season. You think Florida might win that game outright? I do, because the defense and, and, and doing something to LSU that they haven't really consistently had done. And then I'm a, I'm a Dan Mullen, Kyle Trask combination believer. I think that they're good enough to handle the environment. That's Dan Olavsky. I'm Bob Ashusen. Allison Williams with us here in Athens as well. An eye-opening first half score. South Carolina's got the lead. One timeout left for Georgia. Four-man rush. Brom steps up in the pocket. It collapses, and down he goes. And I'm almost surprised that Kirby Smart called the timeout. The helmet came off of Jake Brom, which means he's going to have to come off the field for a play unless a penalty was called. And Georgia did spend the timeout with 20 seconds to go. This is really a, a certainly a coverage sack. But really what's going on is Georgia's trying to hit the home run every play, and South Carolina's playing soft, and there's nowhere to throw the football. And then that defensive line rush for South Carolina because this coverage is so high, they're getting enough time to get home to Fromm. Now, because Georgia called a timeout there, Fromm is going to be able to stay in the game. But I'm not sure how frisky you want to get with your play calling here, do you? I mean, I would, I would think third down, or rather second down, along only uh, 20 seconds to go. In the half, do you risk another turnover? No, I, I, absolutely. You trust your quarterback who's played a ton of snaps. I think that Georgia has the opportunity, again, South Carolina's playing so soft. You can throw this ball at about 20 yards on the hashes, like a big in, or towards the sideline. Now, the big thing you got to do is, again, the communication of if we do get this first down, what is the operation? Is it a quick spike? Is it we're going to run the field goal unit on at some point? That's got to be part of your thought process here. The throw to the sideline, and that will stop the clock. George Pickens gets them into field goal range. I think here you come up and stop the clock immediately with the spike, and then you determine what you want to do on second down. There's the spike. Now they're out of timeouts. Ten seconds to go. Enough time for a quick hitter to the sideline, but if you get tackled in the field of play, the half might end. And that's why it's on Jake Fromm here of where you throw this football, okay? So really, as a play caller, what you want to do is have a five, seven-yard route that goes towards the sideline. And you tell your quarterback, listen, if it's there, throw it. If it's close, your your family catches it in the stands and will kick a field goal with Blankenship. A Blankenship can make from here. And they're inside his acceptable range. There's the throw to the sideline, taking no chances on anything but the clock stopping. And it looks like they're going to run Blankenship out now. His career long 55 in the Rose Bowl against Oklahoma a couple of years ago. That was a Rose Bowl record as well. And this one from 53.
Timeout called by Will Muschamp. Really good job by Georgia's offense of giving yourself the opportunity for points. You obviously would have loved to go down and get a, a, a touchdown, but good job handling the situation and getting yourself an opportunity to kick the field. And I like the timeout by Will Muschamp. You're not taking him into halftime, right? You're also not icing this kicker as coming up tomorrow on Sunday NFL Countdown before they square off head to head. Russell Wilson and Baker Mayfield go quarterback to quarterback. Plus Peyton Manning goes one on one with Brett Favre. And how Patrick Mahomes hairstyle has taken KC by storm at Sunday NFL Countdown 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN tomorrow. Well, this is a guy that made a 55 yarder in the Rose Bowl a couple of years ago. He also made a 51 yarder to give Georgia the lead in the 2017 championship game against Alabama. This is a 53 yarder at the end of a regular season half. And it looks like Will Muschamp's going to allow him to think about it a little bit longer. Crowd loves that. mind the timeout I don't I mean there's no point in keeping them I understand Blankenship is a well, I guess you can call him a generational kicker right I mean he's that good he's that good listen you always force athletes to think about the moment and I'm sure he's got his routine you can see him on the field going through his routine like the timeout's never happened that's what great players do but it's a good job by good job by Will Muschamp going okay there's no point in me keeping these timeouts he was a walk-on until Kirby Smart put him on scholarship a couple of years ago before the Notre Dame game. And Kirby asked him, just tell your parents, keep it to yourself. Well, then he made what turned out to be a game-winning field goal. And afterwards, in the locker room with the team around him, said to Blankenship, what do you have to tell your team? He said, I'm on scholarship, guys. And <laughs> he lost it. So now, with no more timeouts to call from 53. And that's deflected. That had nothing to do with the kicker being iced. That had to do with that defensive front for South Carolina stopping Georgia before the gun. And it is a seven-point lead for the Gamecocks at halftime. The big senior Dylan Wadham just in the middle of your screen. Watch number eight with the left hand. He gets it up. The timeouts pay off for South Carolina defensively. What a first half. What will we have in the second half? We'll find out right now. Time for the studio and the halftime report. We may see Joyner at some point. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football, presented by Xfinity. This is the SEC on ESPN. Just about set for the start of the third quarter. It should be Ryan Halinski to start the third quarter for South Carolina. An injured knee looked like it might sideline him. Can Jake Fromm respond? There is a lot to digest after the first half. It's a seven-point lead for South Carolina. And the Gamecocks will start with the football. If they were to hold on and win this game, this would be the third best win in South Carolina history. And the first time since 2010, when they beat Alabama when they were number one, that they would beat a top three opponent. We did not expect this. What surprises you the most? Well, I, I think the way that the game has shaped out for them defensively, that they've kind of controlled Georgia offensively, just physically, their defensive line and out on the perimeter. And then this is exactly what South Carolina, South Carolina wanted to do commit to running the football and then potentially take some shots downfield. They've got a guy that they can do that with in Brian Edwards. That's the difference. On first down, a seam for Rico Dowdle. A great start to the second half for the South Carolina run game as they pick up 22. If they can run the ball effectively, could there be any other formula that's better for a gimpy quarterback? Absolutely, being able to turn it off, turn it around, hand the football off, and in many ways control the football game for him. Dowdle again. 
and he picks up about five, Allison. It looks like Ryan Holinski is limping a little bit, but Will Muschamp said physically he is fine. Really pleased with how accurate his quarterback was in the first half. And I asked him about the 39 yards rushing. He said with the smile, shoot, I thought we'd have 100 in that first half. But really pleased with the way they were able to run the ball. Defensively, the biggest reason they've been able to stay in this game and can contain Georgia's offense is because they've tackled really well in limited explosive plays. Pop pass knocked down by the corner blitz of Eric Stokes. It'll be third down and five. And, you know, Will Muschamp can say all he wants that his quarterback is just fine. His quarterback is not just fine. He is absolutely fighting through an injury to that left knee. Yeah, credit to Ryan Holinsky for the toughness, right? But if I'm Kirby Smart and on this defense right now, we need something to get our football team feeling good, and I see a quarterback that's hurting, here comes pressure. I'm gonna make you move on purpose and see if you can. Tipped ball, up in the air, bounces around and falls incomplete. Georgia, with a chance for an interception, they do get the stop on third down. How about the back-to-back -back plays versus with Stokes and watch 11 Jermaine Johnson on the right side of your screen He's getting cut gets his hands off get up and bat that ball down I say it all the time you could affect the play or the quarterback In more ways than just hitting him we saw back-to-back -back plays by Stokes and Jermaine Johnson and a good play by Shai Smith the wide receiver to knock that one away and avoid a chance at a pick Playlock fair catch at the 10 we talked about South Carolina's defense the first half. First of all, it's third down man coverage. You tell me who Jake Fromm could throw this football to. Everybody's got sticky defenders on them. And then they've hit John Jake Fromm a little bit. They've hit him five times in the first half. That's not normal for this Georgia offense. And then they forced him to move off his spot. He's trying to throw that football away. Mukwamu's length allows him to get that pick and since he's the only guy out there he turns it into an easy six points but this south carolina defense has come into sanford stadium and said we're going to play all afternoon deandre swift makes a tackle and picks up about three It's going to be interesting to see at least Georgia's offensive mindset, right? Because South Carolina, is Georgia willing to commit to the run? You know, oh, you're, you're down, you're at home. Are they willing to stay committed to running the football and not get impatient for the scoreboard? Zamir White. Bulls his way forward for a couple of more yards. Now it's third down at six. DJ Wanham was there to make the stop. Now they'll roll Swift back in at tailback. I talked about early in the first half and just coming to the start of the second half. South Carolina playing man to man coverage. Look at this matchup right here. See if they get a stack. Maybe move Wolf down. See if you can get some rub releases for these receivers. Brown well protected. Inaccurate on the crossing route, but a flag throw. George Pickens trying to climb the ladder as Fromm airmailed him. We'll have to check the marker. Holding against an eligible receiver, receiver number 29 on the defense. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. That's the Rice transfer, JT Ebay. He held Eli Wolf as he came out of his break. He motioned Wolf down. He put a foot in the ground and he tried to run away. And eBay just tugged on the jersey. Play action. Pitch and catch to Robertson. Fights his way for a first down. eBay made the stop. Nice little RPO there. 
by Jake Fromm and this Georgia offense, but I'm looking at that formation and going, okay, when I get my tight end to the field, I got a chance to take advantage of an aggressive safety and play action. Don't be surprised if Georgia gets back to that formation and throws a shot down the field. Well, we'll give it to Samir White here. And he is wrestled down by Rick Sandage. Gained a yard. You know, we talked about Georgia's offensive line. He gave them the credit that they deserve. You've got to be really impressed with South Carolina's will defensively, like their, their effort on their defensive line. As Sandage might have gotten away with a face mask there, but their effort to stop this run. Zamir White across the 40-yard line for three. So South Carolina forces another third down. Georgia's five for eight. Ernest Jones made the stop. And so Georgia did a nice job. Their initial third down of this second half. They got into a little bit of a bunch set, motion to guide down. It helps them pick, and you got crossers. You've got to continue to think that way if you're James Coley and their offensive coordinator that South Carolina is just going to come out and play man coverage. They rush four. From out of the pocket, being chased to the sideline. Coming back to make the catch is Robertson, but it's ruled out of bounds. Short of the first down, even if he had held on. Yeah, Fromm's forced to leave the pocket because of the coverage. Robertson tries to go up, but obviously out of bounds. I've said it all game. This is about South Carolina's just talent on their back end. It can go, we're better than you, and we're not going to let anyone get open. And Georgia, right now, offensively, they don't have a guy on third down that they can draw a play up for. Edwards will let the Camarda punt bounce behind him, and it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Beautiful day in Athens, but the locals, Sanford, are nervous. We are back with this blimp-worthy play, brought to you by Goodyear. We head back to 2014 when Dylan Thompson led South Carolina with three touchdown passes. Hudson Mason threw for 191 and a couple of touchdowns as well. Todd Gurley added a score, but South Carolina held on as the Dogs missed barely a field goal with about four minutes left. That was the last win in this series for the Gamecocks. They've got the lead early third quarter here. But a penalty. Ball start on the offense, number 84. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Bob Schusen, Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams. Last halftime lead against a top five opponent was against Georgia for South Carolina back in 2012. And they would go on to win that game as well. This a different atmosphere, though. Halinski, screen, John Smith, no chance. Slow developing play, and that can't beat the speed of J.R. Reed, Tay Crowder, and the Dogs defense. So well done by J.R. Reed and Crowder. They saw the motion come over. The motion brings you to the football so often, and there was no hesitation. And now you get first down penalty, first down loss of yardage, and you're backed up, and the crowd comes into it. Tavian Feaster. Two yards. Gonna be third down and 18. And if you're Georgia defensively for Kirby Smart and Dan Lanning, I'm playing soft coverage. I would anticipate South Carolina doing two things. They're gonna run the football, or there's gonna be some kind of a screen. I'm not gonna give you anything easy. Play some zone defense. Come up, make the tackle, and take advantage of the field position. There's the screen. Brian Edwards has it. And Georgia with a flag down, rallies to the ball, but Halinski is down on.
Ahmad is back inside the five yard line and the flag comes out. Wow, not only is Holinsky down, Brian Edwards is down as well. Georgia roughs the passer, so South Carolina still has the football when we come back. But look at the two guys they may be without. A very courageous Ryan Holinsky has fought through a knee injury all afternoon, but he had to be helped to the sideline while we were away, and now his mom Kim's going to come down while dad waits up in the stands to check on him. Here's what happened. Well, watch Adam Anderson here and then Sidarius Hutcherson. As he pressures, Hutcherson's gonna stick his right leg out and that trips Anderson right there. And that's really what forces what looked to be a, a, a dirty play, right? A cheap shot play, but it was not an intentional thing. Certainly doesn't look like it because of that trip. And on the same play, Edwards went down as well. So now it's to carry on Joyner taking over at quarterback Tavian Feaster. Well, Bob and weave his way for about a yard, but this is a player to carry on Joyner that began the year at quarterback. And because of the injuries, not only to Jake Bentley, but that injury now to Ryan Holinsky, Joyner becomes the third quarterback to play crucial snaps this year for South Carolina. He had been in the wide receiver rotation as flags fly. It'll be a false start. All start, offense number 50. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. So once again, Halinski is in the injury tent. So terrible for him, right? He's playing so well. You only wish or hope that he's okay. And now for it to carry on Joyner, coming in as a backup quarterback, it's okay. What is my package? You certainly want 89 back in the game as quickly as possible. But what is my package? What am I good at? Little play action. Bootleg swing pass intended for Josh Van and threw it behind him. So, like, again, what is, what is Joyner good at? Does it change our offensive... Uh, philosophy or, or plan for the rest of this game and then for Georgia defensively what is this kid going to do is it more of a run game for him obviously third and 15 you're gonna be a safe play call right here for South Carolina maybe quarterback draw and Georgia needs to anticipate something like that there it is Tavian Feaster into the secondary are you kidding me he's got a first down Dan, you called it before the snap if you're Georgia. Watch out for the draw and right up the gut. He picks up the first end. And, and that's on play call. South Carolina is spread out, and Georgia only leaves five guys in the box. One linebacker. The number one thing you should not do against a quarterback that can run, which you to carry and joiner is, is give just five people in the box and play cover two man on the outside. We go Dowdle. A yard. Going back to that third down, if you play two man versus spread out field and only leave one linebacker in the box, 4D linemen, one linebacker, they're five on five. You never play that versus a running quarterback on third down. And when you say two man, that's two deep safeties and man to man on all the receivers. Yep. There's a screen to Van. He gets a block. He gets to the 50 yard line and makes it third down and very manageable for South Carolina. Third down at about two. And now this this is where the, the joiner aspect comes into play because I can't imagine that Georgia was super focused on the potential zone read quarterback pull on third and short. Well now with the carry on joiner and his athleticism, it becomes much more of a possible play call for South Carolina. And now only one deep safety on third and two. There's the slant and complete tipped at the line. Man the intended receiver. Eric Stokes was there in coverage. Guys, Holinsky remains in the injury tent. I did see them take a bag of ice into him, though, which is never a good sign. However, Edwards had both of his ankles taped, his left ankle taped twice. He was trying it out, has his helmet back on, and it looks like he may be able to return to this game. 
Now that's very important for DeCarrion Joyner because for any future possessions, he's going to want his best player on the field. End over end punt from Charlton. Blaylock lets it bounce and it takes the hop into the end zone. Fortunate for the dogs. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. We're big fans. And Corona Premier. Lower carbs, lower calories, higher expectations. Enjoy the view. If you're old enough to have seen this guy in this stadium, in his prime, he was a force of nature. Just an incredible player to watch. And the greatest player in the history of Georgia football. Here's Zamir White. What a tradition they have of great running backs for Georgia. And White gets the drive started. But how about this week's CFB 150 all-time greats? We had a unanimous vote that Herschel Walker was indeed the greatest of all time at Georgia. But that's pretty good honorable mentions there. Frank Sinkwich won the Heisman. Champ Bailey as good as it got as a cover corner. And David Pollock, our guy Pollock, certainly deserves a He looks a little well. different now, Pollock, than he did certainly on the pictures around campus. So many good players, though. Like, I would put David Green up there. You guys are quarterback eaters. Now. It is hard to pick only five. Your right, brought down right at the line of scrimmage by Rick Sandage. And South Carolina again forces Georgia into a third down. There had to be some kind of miscommunication by Georgia's offensive line. As we see Ben Cleveland, who's the right guard coming off, my imagination is he should, I would imagine he should have gotten Sandage there, but this is the story of the game. Georgia has to find a way as coaches to help their players win in man coverage. Motion down, get into some kind of stack, and get some free releases. What's coming from one-on-one -on -one to this true freshman, George Pickens, fights for the football on McQuamo. And he's got the first down catch. Really nice job by the freshman Pickens. One of the things I saw on tape was contested drops out of this receiving unit. That is a contested catch by Pickens strong hands on the big corner but here's the thing again another really difficult third down conversion nothing's easy right now for Georgia offensively play action from was looking downfield for the deep ball and could not find an open receiver again which allows the sack DJ Wanham and Kobe Smith all over Jake Fromm Really good job by the underneath defenders of South Carolina to drop underneath the big end that's coming at about 18 yards. They tell Jake Fromm, you can't throw it here, and that just gave enough time for that rush to get home. Coming into today, Jake Fromm had dropped back 114 times this season and had been sacked once. That's the third sack of the day for South Carolina. He's getting soft coverage on the outside. You see how soft these corners are. Got some free access throws. Well, man rush. Swift pays the price. Oh, he get leveled by TJ Brunson. And now it's third down and close to nine. Good job by South Carolina changing the coverage at the snap. I'd say DeAndre Swift, that's on him. That ball was thrown on his left shoulder. He turns right. A lot of times quarterbacks will tell you where to turn by the location of the football. Swift should have turned inside there and never taken that hit. Third down, we got man-to-man -man coverage again. Expect some motion. Motion the receiver all the way across the formation. See if you can get guys running. There's Blaylock in motion. Wanham came right up the middle. Flags everywhere. From long throw to the sideline, incomplete. DJ Wanham fought his way through. It looks like it's holding against Georgia. On the offense, number 71, penalty is declined. Fourth down. If I would have told you, Dan, we'd have three minutes to go in the third quarter. Georgia is at home, and they have not had one three and out on offense today, and yet they've got only 10 points on the board. Wow. 
Third down. They, they have dom been dominated on third down offensively. Wobbly kick for Camarda. Shai Smith let it bounce. And it rolls dead at the 17. Back to work for DeCarry on Joyner. A quarterback converted to wide receiver. Forwards to go back to quarterback because of two injuries now. First to Jake Bentley in the opener. And Ryan Holinsky today here at Georgia. Milking a seven-point lead. Swing pass. We go down him. Simple pitch and catch, and a good play on first down for five yards. Well, Ryan Holinsky may be banged up, but he is involved on that sideline for South Carolina today. This is incredible. Again, this is a freshman right now. I can't go play. How can I help you? Talk to him. You know, it's really important. I've seen this out of Georgia's defense. This is what they're showing you. This is what you can get to. Dowdle. It'll be third down. Monty Rice brought him down near the line of scrimmage. So third down and a long four, close to five. And South Carolina's going empty backfield. No light. So Georgia still has only five defenders in the box. You're outnumbered if you're Georgia defensively right now. And they can't get lined up. Joyner in trouble. He will scramble. And he'll come up just short of the first down. Tay Crowder got him on the ground. A half yard shot. Nice tackle by Tay Crowder in the open field. Coming up, coming off his coverage and making sure just short enough to get his defense off the field. Ryan Holinsky trying to will that to a first down. But it'll be Joseph Charlton out again to try and kick it away. Second in the nation in yards per punt. Wobbly kick. Waylock immediately calls for a fair catch, though. His own 23-yard line. Another update with Matt. Guys, a little mayhem there in Georgia. A little All-State mayhem moment here in the Red River shootout. This Roshan Johnson finds a crease, goes 57 yards, which is the longest run for Texas over the last three seasons. He would eventually get knocked down. Texas would punch it in. We are tied at 10 in the third. I'll talk about a shakeup. One way or the other, you can have a little shakeup between the two teams playing in the Red River game. But if South Carolina holds on shockwaves all around college football, if Georgia can't pull one out at home as they trail by seven as we head towards the fourth quarter. Ron back to throw. Steps up. Over the middle into double coverage. And he squeezes it through to George Pickens. What a play by the true freshman. Contested catches, not contested drops. Fromm gives his guy a chance. The freshman goes up and really rips this football away from Ernest Jones. Contested catches. And now Georgia plays with some tempo. This is Tyler Simmons. Gain of eight and a half. Look at the dogs trying to go quickly to try and get South Carolina on their heels defensively. James Cook gets outside. First down and more. Inside the 20. Flag down back near the line. I don't know about this one. Let's watch 74 right there. 
Ben Cleveland. It's not at the initial contact, but watch when he gets hands on that linebacker. And then when he tries to separate right there. So a little bit of a jersey tug. I don't. Is it a little bit of a jersey tug, kind of the definition of holding? Says a defensive guy. Yeah. I just, there's no, nothing on every play like that. I, I don't think that's holding. You're a quarterback. You used to take all those guys out for dinner. That might be the final play of the quarter. It's a first down, nonetheless, for Georgia. They'll move the chains to the 30-yard line of Demetrius Robertson. And we head to the fourth quarter here between the hedges. Seven-point lead for South Carolina. Key plays how we arrived at a seven-point lead for South Carolina, Dan, as we head to the fourth. Early on, they got their big play-making receiver, Brian Edwards, and man-to-man, -man, they want a double move out and up. Great throw by Halinski, and then kind of inexplainably, Jake Fromm, under pressure, trying to throw that football away, and Mukwamu's long enough to go make that pick, and that's the difference of the ball game right now. South Carolina up 17-10. to 10. Ryan Holinsky knocked out with a knee injury to carry and join her at quarterback for South Carolina. Jake Fromm, though, on a march, plus the center exchange. It's on the deck, and it's a giveaway by Georgia. A muffed center exchange for Jake Fromm's. Got the other quarterback up with a fist bump on the South Carolina sideline as T.J. Brunson found the loose ball. They want Holinsky to sit back down. Watch number 55, Trey Hill, the center, move to his right, okay? Jake Fromm has to go with him that way just for a blink. He turns to his left. The center is going opposite that, and that forces the disconnect between hand and football. Helinski loves it, and obviously a terrible start for Georgia this fourth quarter. Maybe Feaster looking for a cutback lane. Out across the 30 to about the 32 yard line, picks up three. And they're trying to get things straightened out over on the sideline with the center exchange. And remember, we, we talked to the coaches yesterday, and they love Trey Hill, but sometimes the snap is not exactly where you want it, and that's a big deal. We saw it there. Joyner in trouble. Dodges, tackles in the backfield, tucks it under, lowers his shoulders, and gets the first down. Got another injury to worry about for South Carolina now. That's Darius Hutcherson, the left tackle who's down. Already without their quarterback and their best wide receiver, the left tackle. Now looking at his left knee. Just getting a college football Saturday started. Time for today's Wendy's weekend watch. Florida State Clemson coming up next and then two big ones later on tonight Big Ten SEC ranked teams against ranked teams Dan what jumps out well everyone's talked about Joe Burrow versus the Florida defense I'm looking at Kyle Trask versus an LSU defense that you know hasn't been what they traditionally have been they're not getting home to the quarterback and Florida skill players on the outside match up well I think Kyle Trask has a good chance to go into that environment and at least play well Delayed handoff to Rico Dowdle. That was Dan Orlovsky. I'm Bob Wischusen. Allison Williams with us here as well. And between the hedges, South Carolina playing with tempo. A little screen, but flags down. They must not have been set. This is going to cost South Carolina five. Now, with the seven point lead and the third string quarterback. All start offense. Not all 11 players were set for a full second. Penalty. Still second down. Do you like still playing with tempo here? If you're South Carolina, would you prefer to milk the clock? No, I like playing with tempo because that's who you are. There's a lot of football game left. And also, remember, going back to an athletic quarterback, tempo sometimes creates misalignment. With the guy that has the speed that Joyner does, if you get a guy misaligned, that could be a massive play for your offense. Now, that false start was on him. He's got to make sure everybody gets set before he ever snaps that football. Bootleg, Joyner, long throw, incomplete. 
Shai Smith, the intended receiver. And the pressure came from Nolan Smith, the number one overall recruit, putting pressure. There it is. Nolan Smith has got a bright future. Big shot right there on Joyner. And I've talked about these third and longs for Georgia so far. Do not put just five people up in that box and give the opportunity for the draw or quarterback draw. South Carolina. They played zone. They brought a corner blitz. Tyreek Stevenson comes off the right side of your screen, unblocked. He forces Joyner to move. An outstanding job by Nolan Smith. Nolan Smith staying where you're supposed to stay. Keep contain and leverage. Make the play on Joyner. Fair catch for the freshman, Dominic Blaylock. Georgia's got it back, down by seven after a 42-yard punt. Just getting a college football Saturday started. Time for today's Wendy's Weekend Watch. Florida State Clemson coming up next, and then two big ones later on tonight. Big Ten, SEC, ranked teams against ranked teams. Dan, what jumps out? Well, everyone's talked about Joe Burrow versus the Florida defense. I'm looking at Kyle Trask versus an LSU defense that, you know, hasn't been what they traditionally have been. They're not getting home to the quarterback, and Florida skill players on the outside match up well. I think Kyle Trask has a good chance to go into that environment and at least play well. Delayed handoff to Rico Dowdle. That was Dan Orlovsky. I'm Bob Wischusen. Allison Williams with us here as well. And between the hedges, South Carolina playing with tempo. A little screen, but flags down. They must not have been set. This is going to cost South Carolina five. Now, with the seven point lead and the third string quarterback. All start for offense. Not all 11 players were set for a full second. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Do you like still playing with tempo here? If you're South Carolina, would you prefer to milk the clock? No, I like playing with tempo because that's who you are. There's a lot of football game left. And also, remember, going back to an athletic quarterback, tempo sometimes creates misalignment. With the guy that has the speed that Joyner does, if you get a guy misaligned, that could be a massive play for your offense. Now, that false start was on him. He's got to make sure everybody gets set before he ever snaps that football. Bootleg. Joiner, long throw, incomplete. Shai Smith, the intended receiver. And the pressure came from Nolan Smith, the number one overall recruit, putting pressure. There it is. Nolan Smith has got a bright future. Big shot right there on Joiner. And I've talked about these third and longs for Georgia so far. Do not put just five people up in that box and give the opportunity for the draw or quarterback draw. Out of the pocket is Joyner, and he'll dirt it. Once again, it's the number one overall recruit in America, Nolan Smith, all over to carry on Joyner. It'll be a punt for South Carolina. They played zone. They brought a corner blitz. Tyreek Stevenson comes off the right side of your screen, unblocked. He forces Joyner to move. An outstanding job by Nolan Smith. Nolan Smith staying where you're supposed to stay. Keep contain and leverage. Make the play on Joyner. Fair catch for the freshman, Dominic Blaylock. Georgia's got it back, down by seven after a 42-yard punt. ESPN College Football is presented by Xfinity. Get the ultimate in-home Wi-Fi experience with Xfinity XFi. 
game changing plays have been made offensively and defensively today for South Carolina. Israel Makwamu, that pick six before halftime, made it 17 10, South Carolina. And that is our score early on in the fourth quarter. Bob Oshusen, Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams here in Athens. DeAndre Swift grinds out about five yards. Now, earlier in the game, Ryan Holinsky was knocked out. And that is him giving the thumbs up and an I'm okay and blowing a kiss to his mom. Kim is looking for her son to give her a little bit of reassurance, but he is obviously knocked out of the rest of this game and who knows for how long. We kind of saw a little three there, right? You know, a little from him and his mother. Awesome, awesome, cool, very cool moment. Swift again. It has been strong on the interior defensively for South Carolina. And it's third down and three after we check in with Matt. Guys, Lincoln Riley dialing up a ball play for Oklahoma here. Second and 10, Oklahoma, a little flea flicker to C.D. Lamb. Now, Texas, by the way, leads the nation in missed tackles with 47. Another good example over there, C.D. Lamb scores 17-10 Sooners. I don't know if we've seen a South Carolina miss tackle today. They have been so sound, and they forced third down at three. Jake Fromm from a clean pocket, incomplete. Flag thrown from the secondary. Maquamu on Tyler Simmons. in good position but watch at the top right there at the 30 yard line there was just a little bit of tug he pulls Simmons just to just close to him right there he's in good position he's so long unnecessary pull in the back of the jersey DeAndre Swift right up the middle and there is that big offensive line just changing the line of scrimmage for four and a half maybe five yards Penn State, Iowa at Kinnick later on tonight, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on ABC and the ESPN app. That's our Saturday night football game presented by Wells Fargo. And this is a down for me that I think Georgia needs to do something offensively aggressive-wise. They've been so run-run first and second down. Getting into third down, you want to be aggressive with a play-action shot here on second down. Samir White this time, going nowhere. Third down and six. I think the crowd here at Sanford is thinking the same thing you are, Dan. They are getting a little impatient with what they think is conservative play calling into the heart of the South Carolina defense. And this South Carolina defensive line, just both the linebackers and defensive line are canceling out gaps. There's nowhere right now to consistently run the football. And now you're faced with the third and seven again. You can see the signal from South Carolina defensively. This bunch set that Georgia's in, they're going to zone this off. So now if you're Georgia, you've got to find some zone beaters. Across his body, from finds Samir White. Well-designed play and a first down to midfield. What a big third down conversion for Georgia. It's all Jake Fromm. That was a non-designed screen. He realizes some guy's unblocked. No one's covering the back. Get it out of my hands. Now they play with tempo. Incomplete. Over the middle for Eli Wolf. Good job by Ernest Jones. And there's a sophomore linebacker, Ernest Jones, that gave up a redshirt year. Last season as a true freshman, he had played four games. Yeah. The belt bowl was game five. They said, look, you could sit the belt bowl out and hold on to another year, or you can play with your guys today. He said, I'm going to play with my guys today. He's been huge because that's allowed T.J. Brunson to go from middle linebacker to the weak side linebacker, and Ernest Jones is just one of those guys, we can't keep him off the field if you're South Carolina defensively. Communicator, he's consistent for them. He's a big player for South Carolina. Screen pass, James Cook. 
out of bounds at the South Carolina 43 yard line a couple of yards shy of a first down they'll actually mark him out at the 44 so it's a gain of seven another big third down and, and let's be honest like if you're Jake Fromm this is the this 10 minute stretch is huge for your career and legacy like if you're the best quarterback in the country and you're the best quarterback in the SEC East you do not allow your football team to lose this game and third downs are going to be the story for the next nine and a half minutes. Here comes a blitz from outside. Reaching out to try and pick it off is McQuamu. He's got it. Second interception of the day for Israel McQuamu. An errant throw from Jake Fromm. Was that just miscommunication on the route he was expecting Matt Landers, the wide receiver, to run? It's a stop route. And the big thing with the stop route is at the top, if you're Landers, come back down where you came from, your stem. He curled inside. Now there's a lot of contact by Mukwamu as well. But Jake Fromm's throwing that ball, anticipating Landers to come back where he came from. He went inside, ball and out. But I, I, talk, we, I said this, do not throw the ball 24's way in man-to-man. -man. You don't match up. But they're calling plays to get their receivers one on one against Mukwamu. And you don't have anybody that can just line up and beat him. And it hurts Georgia's offense there. I think they want to make sure that Mukwamu, as they go to replay here, had complete control of this football as he came down with it. Will it be a turnover? We'll find out when we come back. South Carolina, as it is now, has got the football. We're back with this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Allstate. We could be in store for a shakeup. Right now, Georgia trailing South Carolina by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma doubling up Texas in the Red River game. Everything else later on or tonight, of course, the big one between Florida and LSU right here on ESPN at 8 Eastern. They went to review, and the call on the field stood. It is indeed a Mukwamu interception of Jake Fromm. And now a flag thrown from the far sideline, a false start. False start, offense number 52. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's the second time we've seen that. What George is doing is, when the motion comes, watch their defensive line shift. Now back to the interception. Watch the ball touch the ground there, and that obviously got the attention of the crowd. You are allowed to have the ball touch the ground as long as in the official's opinion you've got complete control of it. As Joyner swings a pass wide to Shai Smith. Smith makes a man miss and gets across the 40 to the 41-yard line. So even though Mukwamu had the ball make contact with the ground, he's controlling it. It's a clean catch, and that was the interception. Now, once again, with tempo, South Carolina is ready to go. Quarterback keeper, Joyner gets outside. Does a good job to slide inbounds to keep the clock rolling a yard shy on the first down, but it kind of runs counterintuitive, doesn't it, to slide and stay inbounds, but then play hurry up? Well. And also, I don't know if the slide is worth it there. I mean, I would love to see him go get that first down. Good point. That slide creates the second or third and long one. He's going to try and throw for it. And he's got it. Over the middle, a first down catch for Shai Smith. So no Ryan Holinsky. Brian Edwards has been able to make his way back in the game. Nice job by Shai Smith, this shallow ball a little bit low and away, but strong hands to confirm that catch and roll underneath Holinsky. How awesome is it seeing him on the sideline and his energy for this team? Rico Dowdle spins into Georgia territory. Down by Tay Crowder. 
think if you're Georgia defensively, you got to start thinking about bringing some pressure against this offense. You know, off both edges, if they're going to be running some zone reads, off both edges so you can shut down the run, but also allocate someone to the quarterback. And you got to trust your back end playing some man-to-man -man coverage. And now working on the clock a bit. Looking over was to carry on Jordan. They clock under 10 this time, and they snap the ball. We go down him. Two yards, third down and four. After we remind you that week six of Monday Night Football has arrived. The big NFC North matchup at Lambeau. Matthew Stafford and the Lions take on Aaron Rodgers and the four and one Packers. Kate Eastern on ESPN. ESPN to port this and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at six. Now George is going to play with three D linemen. And then watch these two guys in the middle. They're going to kind of spy Joyner. Long throw, incomplete, over the head of Shai Smith. And here comes the punt group for South Carolina. They'll try and let Joseph Trump see if he can keep Georgia deep. It's a really nice job by South Carolina's offense, though. They just took about three minutes off the clock. Not about, what, 25, 30 yards of field position, and now they give their weapon of a punter the chance to make Georgia go a long way. And there's the intentional end over end kick. It's going to land inside the 10 and get stopped by South Carolina at the three. Can't do it any better on special teams for the Gamecocks. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. The Dogs Student Section already on the National Watch List. Head to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete and get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. Well, they're going to need some help from the student section, maybe, to get their offense riled up. The last seven drives for Georgia. A couple of turnovers. Three turnovers, in fact, mixed in there. And now they start from their own four. From the end zone, Jake Fromm looking downfield. He's going to take a shot for Pickens. Incomplete. Georgia offensive line coach Sam Pittman wants his guys to keep their heads up literally and figuratively telling them when they're running the football they have to defend the double team with their eyes up and reminding them to stay in the moment. He said who cares what's happened to this point you have to forget about it and look forward all we need is one score. He said let's go guys and he wants them to go a little bit faster too much time in between plays for their liking right now. Well they've only got 619 left and with the long field out in front of them. This may be their last opportunity with the football. Draw play. Swift. Close to a first down. About a yard shot. Quickly back to Matt Barry. Okay, guys, here comes Texas in Dallas against Oklahoma. Sam Ellinger from three yards out. And they've closed the gap right now. 20 to 17, Oklahoma headed to the fourth. Matt, we're headed down to the last five and a half minutes. Third and one for Georgia. Flags down. South Carolina thinks they were drawn off. Offside. They were not. Defense number three. Contact. Five yard penalty. Will result in their first down. Watch Jake Fromm here. Watch the little head bob <clears throat> with some energy. You get deep in your voice right there. Kinlaw's is paying attention. He's having a dominant game. He hears the cadence. Nice job by the vet quarterback. And that gives Georgia a first down. Fromm out of the pocket. He's going to tuck it under and run. That'll stop the clock at least for the moment with 5.25 to go as he picks up seven. Any means necessary right now for Jake Fromm in this offense. To Allison's point, talking about Sam Pittman, it doesn't matter what has happened to this point. 
You have to find a way to do what's necessary to go and score a touchdown and tie this football game up. If it's running a couple times, do whatever it takes. A lot of time coming off the clock. Late clock down to one at the snap. From up the seam, threw it a little low, but reaching back to make the catch. Another freshman, Dominic Blaylock. Gain of 16. Good job by Blaylock. And this throw by Fromm is there on purpose. He sees that corner coming over the top. Throw it low and allow your guy to go make a catch. The sideline, Pickens. Guys, Georgia is missing one of their bigger bodied receivers on the outside. Lawrence Cager is out for the game with a rib injury. Keep that in mind on this drive. You gotta go with tempo here if you're Georgia. When you've played with tempo, South Carolina's got a little softer on the outside. Easier throws for them. DeAndre Swift, he is driven back. Able to pick up about three. Kingsley and Igbari was there, along with R.J. Roderick. Right now, I, I like working the left side of the field if I'm Georgia. To my right is Mukwamu, who's had a big day. To my left, J.C. Horn, really good corner, but at least I feel like I've got a chance over there. Work the left side of your field. And that's George Pickens, the freshman. He's out wide to the left. Play action. From looking back to the left. Floats one down the sideline, incomplete. Playlock had a step. Jamie Robinson, the nickelback, trying to stay with him. And now we get another injury for the Gamecocks. Aaron Sterling, the right defensive end, is down. Our next UFC fight night on ESPN Plus is tonight at 8 Eastern. In Tampa, it'll be former champ Joanna Yemjechuk taking on Michelle Waterson in the strawweight main event. Both are looking for a title fight with a win. To order the main card in English and Spanish, head to ESPNPlus.com and be sure to download the ESPN app if you're watching on a mobile device. The prelims start at 5 Eastern. It has been a war of attrition today for South Carolina. Think about the players that they have either lost for the game or at least for a good portion of the game. They've lost their left tackle, Sedarius Hutcherson, obviously the quarterback. And Ryan Holinsky, Brian Edwards was knocked out for quite a while. Now you got a starting defensive end and Aaron Sterling walking off the field. They were already without their right tackle, Dylan Wanham, today. So they are trying to do this shorthanded, pull off a huge upset. They've hung their hat on kind of who they want to be, right? They've hung their hat on running the football, not making mistakes, and playing great physical in your face defense I talked about it last play if I'm Georgia here I'm putting the guy that I don't want to throw the football to the bottom of the field to the right where Mukwamu is and I'm going to work to the left side of the field into the boundary that's where I've got my best matchup I've got to give Jake from a guy that if they play zone you can beat him and if they play man you can beat him huge third down here four man rush from well protected to the sideline. Toe tap. Robertson, first down. Nice play call. They gave Jake Fromm a zone beater to the right side of the field. A beautiful throw, and Robertson get, and making sure that he secures that catch, getting feet down. Pickens wide open. One on one. Lowers his shoulders. Picks up another first down. Out of the 15-yard line. A drive with a game on the line for Georgia that began at their own four-yard line. South Carolina's going to line up and play one-on-one. -on -one. There'll be a matchup up there. Ramlutenzo 
Now he's extending the play. And he'll throw it away. Aaron Sterling wasn't out for long. He came back in and chased down Jake Fromm and forced the throw away. It's never been a good sign for Georgia when Jake Fromm has had to throw the ball a lot. Well, today, in completions and attempts, both career highs. Kind of talked about how they want to never play from a position of safe on offense because their run game is getting shut down. That's what they've had to do, play kind of safe because they've been stirring longs and not being able to beat man. Zamir White. The 11-yard line, another massive third down with two and a half minutes to go. You got to remember now, this field is significantly smaller than it was 30 yards ago. They did a good job that last third down of giving from a man option and a zone option. Listen, I got to imagine that South Carolina, yep, corner's coming over. You see number one, J.C. Horn running over to this trip side. This is telling Fromm we're in man-to-man -man coverage, sends in motion, find a man-beater crossing the field. Fromm pumps. High throw to the pylon, incomplete, looking for Wolf. Now it's fourth down, and with 1.59 to go, you have to go for it. Right now, if you get into this situation in your Georgia, you go to your best third and seven call. Understand it's fourth down, but you go to your best third and seven call. And if you line up and you don't like it, the look for South Carolina defensively, you call a timeout. The play is more important than the timeout. Down to five on the play clock. Down to two. They get it off. From under pressure, floats one in the back of the end zone. Wolf, the intended receiver, out comes the flag. He was held just shy of the goal line. Jamie Robinson's going to get called for the penalty. The sideline for South Carolina wants that to be ruled uncatchable. Holding against the eligible receiver, number seven of the defense. the right call you're gonna see Jamie Robinson at the bottom of the screen right there tug on Eli Wolf nice job by Eli Wolf for trying to fight through that contact and I know Holinsky doesn't like it but it's uncatchable because of that hold with the game on the line first of goal for Georgia Just looks like he got that left foot down, ball over the top. The concentration to make the catch and make sure that left foot got down. They got Robertson on a safety. A beautiful throw by Jake from up over the top, right? Types of throws. Outstanding drive by Georgia, led by their big time quarterback. You want to talk about a prove it drive mm -hmm. for a quarterback when everything has gone wrong since basically the end of the first quarter? A 13 play, 96 yard touchdown drive. And now it's on Rodrigo Blankenship, who's working on a record of consecutive made point efforts. Try and tie it up.
tied at 17. Matt Barry, back to you. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Good finish there, Athens. What about Oklahoma? Jalen Hurts to CeeDee Lamb, and again at the tackling of Texas. Two missed tackles. CeeDee Lamb scores 27 17 in the fourth. One forty-eight to go in the fourth quarter here. Tied at 17. Now, South Carolina playing with their third string quarterback. They've got all three timeouts. I can't imagine they're thinking, let's just play for overtime. You're going to roll the dice and see if you can try to get into field goal range and win this game. Absolutely. If you're South Carolina, you're on aggressive offensively. You know, you came in here to try to pull off the upset and you give yourself the chance. And then if you're Georgia defensively, I have two mindsets. One, number 89, Brian Edwards, is not going to beat me. And number two, I'm not going to let on Joyner's legs beat me. I will spy him every play. I will force him to run in areas that I want him. Those two guys will not beat me in it either way. Shai Smith going to let this one go through the back of the end zone. How about that last drive from a quarterback that you think might be the best in America? Today? You called it. It was a show-me drive. Whatever it took, we saw a scramble. No one was open. We saw him make contested throws, push the ball to the sideline. A huge third down zone ball, and then the touchdown. Up over the top, the perfect type of throw in the perfect location. He needed it. He delivered. Well, Kirby Smart's got all three of his timeouts. So if South Carolina gets conservative, he might look to use them. They're not going to get conservative. They're going to throw the ball to the sideline and complete it to Nick Muse. There's some faith in the carry on Joyner. Again, this one incomplete. You see South Carolina trying to get Brian Edwards, number 89, in different spots. They want to make sure they're moving him around, finding matchups. Joyner down the sideline, trying to drop one in. Chavis Dawkins will flag down. Working on DJ Daniel. Serve some time and settle his team down as Parker White gets warmed up on the sideline, hoping for a chance. What a start to the day in college football. What a finish it could be tonight at Death Valley. And after they're done between Florida and LSU, Michael Eves and Kenny Mayma left Sports Center. They will have Ed Orgeron and Dan Mullins live post-game press conferences. Plus the college football teams with the easiest path to the playoff. Yankees Astros game one, Nationals Cardinals game two. All that and more on Sports Center after college football later on tonight on ESPN and the ESPN app. I really think if you're Georgia defensively, you got to be ultra aware of a designed quarterback run. You know, South Carolina really only needs another 10, 12, 15 yards as a a potential field goal, so I don't necessarily want to play some man coverage. I'd like to bring some kind of blitz, but a zone blitz. 
bring some pressure and play some zone have all the eyes on the floor. And about another 20 yards or so to be comfortable inside Parker White's range. Jenner makes some man miss and gets dragged down from behind at the 43-yard line. Again, that's Nolan Smith, the freshman, making a tackle. Down to a minute 12 to go. Third down at six. Three-man rush. Nowhere to go with the football for Joyner. He's going to try to run for it. Gets tripped up short. Fourth down and three at the 40-yard line. Well, from here, you're looking at about 57-yard field goal. Kirby should call a timeout. It's fourth down and three. And Georgia will spend a timeout. Guys, I talked to Will Muschamp before the game, and he said if it came down to a game winner, he would be most comfortable at the 35-yard line was the extent of the range for his kicker. So tough to sit in here on fourth down. Well, Parker White made a field goal of 49 and three quarters yards, basically, earlier in this game, just a shade inside 50. And that is his career long. This would be from here in the neighborhood of 57, maybe 58 yards. I would imagine that Will Muschamp not only goes for this, but leaves his offense out there, and the formations have been good to them. Well, if you go for this, and you don't get it, plenty of time for Georgia to get blank in shipping field goal range. And here comes Parker White. They're going to try it from 58. Well in reach, doesn't matter, it's wide right. And now, George has got a chance with midfield position and two timeouts. Will Muschamp went for the win. Low percentage, but went for the win. What do you think? I, I did not love the kick. I would have left the offense out there, especially with the athlete I had at quarterback. My offense has been decent running the football, and that's a lot to ask for a kicker. Now Georgia offense, you need about 25 yards to have a shot at it. You've got your two timeouts. The whole playbook is open. The whole field is accessed. The one thing I'm not doing, throwing the ball to my right. To the bottom of screen at a 24. Brown has all dead. It's a check down swift, and it's thrown behind him. Rodrigo Blankenship, perfect on the season so far. He has made pressure kicks in the past. I've seen this a little bit from Jake Fromm today. Just some missed throws, not character of, out of character for him, and that's a big miss. That's a 12, 15 yard game there. I still think there's the opportunity. South Carolina's walking, DJ won him out over number one, Pickens. Right here, not giving him a free release off the line of scrimmage. But you've got some opportunity to throw the ball down those seams. Drop play. And finding some room is Swift. And now you don't want to call a timeout. And they will. 28 seconds to go. Georgia can get the ball anywhere inside the 40, close to the 35-yard line. You know they feel like that guy can make a game to kick. Yeah, and that gives you a lot of confidence as a play caller, right? That you can get the ball to at least a decent chance or shot at a kick. Third and three here, third and four for this Georgia offense. It's been the story of the game, right? South Carolina is a play caller. You got to think South Carolina's going to play man-to-man -man on me. Who? is my best matchup. I don't really have one. Then what is the thing, what is the play that's going to create that matchup? That's why you got to get into some kind of condensed splits. Receivers next to each other, get rub, get some kind of pick, get running across the field. And I've said this before, 
Jake Fromm has missed the back a little bit. And the back against man-to-man -man coverage with some picks can pop open uncovered. Lincoln shift only missed this season on the kick that DJ Wanham blocked before halftime. If he's gotten the kick past the line of scrimmage this year, it's gone through. Can they set him up? Third down and two. There is one on one right there, no help. From instead looked right. Now he's going to get out of the pocket and run. From the sideline, preserves time, and picks up a first down. To the South Carolina 43. This drive in this fourth quarter for Fromm reminds me a little bit of Patrick Mahomes a couple weeks ago against the Detroit Lions. Not having the greatest game. When the ball was in his hands at the end, it took whatever it needed to take to get the win. A couple runs by Mahomes have been big. A couple runs by Jake Fromm have been big. seconds to go. Georgia now out of timeouts. Now we saw before halftime, mm -hmm. they tried to get one quick to the sideline, didn't work, and they had time on the clock to blank. And 13 seconds, plenty of time to run a play. Yep. Are you taking that chance? Yeah, so I am. So this is the first thing. You're talking to your quarterback, Jake Fromm. By any means, this ball gets out of your hands. You do not take a sack. Second thing is a play caller. There's no route that is underneath the first down marker for me here. I don't want this all caught at three or four yards, and that's on your quarterback as well. I want to call it three or four yards, and the clock runs out. I want to get some seven, eight-yard designed routes past the first down, get a completion and a quick spike. You've got two downs to do that if you do it efficiently for Georgia. A field goal of about this distance before halftime, his last attempt, and the only miss that blanket ship has had this year was that blocked by one of them. You know, I'd probably take Simmons, who's been kind of my reliable guy. And I would leave him on the bottom of the screen with Mufamu. And then I've got to get something with Pickens, So I think matches up decently well with J.C. Horn at the top of our screen. And maybe a stop route, maybe a comeback, something that's going to make sure I get past that first down marker. From Sadla broken up. Eight seconds to go. Eli Wolf, the intended receiver. They may have to kick it from right here. It is third down. So you can run one more play potentially as long as it's to the sideline. It's a strategic play, though. What they're doing here, I, there's no way I'm trying to get a completion. I'm going to tell Jay Fryman, catch this snap. Throw it over number 87, Simmons head to our bench. We waste three or four seconds, and then we attempt our field goal. We either win the game or go into overtime. There's no way I leave any time. That clock down to three. Down to two. They get the snap off. From looking sideline, flag down. And that's tipped it out of bounds with three seconds on the clock. We'll have to check the penalty marker on the far side of the field. And this could be a huge call. We're going to get a legal formation. They changed the formation, never got set for a second. Legal shift. Offense. Number one, number six, eight, and moving at the same time. And now they set for a full second. Five yard penalty. Repeat that. Watch these guys as they change the formation and they switch. One goes from off, one goes from on. Ball gets snapped. It's got to be set for a second right there. And obviously, Kirby Smoke that knocks him out of field goal range. He's not, he's not going to put the field goal group out there, it looks like. It looks like they are now going to just throw one, I guess, to the end zone. And they're not going to get an opportunity with Blankenship to win the game before overtime. Either that, or maybe from just plays for overtime. It would be a 60-yard field goal or so if they tried it. 
And now Will Muschamp's going to call a timeout. Are you surprised at the blanket chip? No one knows his kicker better than Kirby Smart. But the guy that made a 55-yarder in the Rose Bowl would give it a chance from 60 yards, where the only way it burns you is if it's blocked and run back. I mean, I, I, I would give Blankenship a shot at this. I, I don't have a feeling, again, South Carolina has a six foot four corner out there in Mukwamu, so a jump ball is gonna be a huge advantage for him. But you're in this position because you mismanage third down. I would give Blankenship a shot at this kick. I think the crowd is chanting Rodrigo. I think the crowd wants to see Blankenship get a shot at it. And they are booing the fact that Blankenship's not going to get a chance to kick it from downtown. But in Kirby's defense, he he might only be a 58-yarder. You know, like, Kirby knows the kicker better than anybody. He may not have a chance at 60. What's the harm, though? What's the higher sure. percentage play? Throwing a Hail Mary in the end zone? We're letting him try a 50 or a close to 60 yarder. It's moved now. From looking downfield, gets hit as he throws. The ball comes out. And it is ruled, I believe, they fumble. It's picked up by Javon Kinlaw. And he gets bumped out of bounds. And we will go to overtime. Now, Ken has been so good with his effort. This is Sterling on the back end. That's not a fumble. His hand was cut forward. But it would have been the last play regardless. So we head to overtime when we come back. South Carolina won the toss and has chosen to take the defensive route. So it will be Georgia football to begin overtime. Dan Orlovsky, a look back at how we got here. Well, it started with Ryan Holinsky finding his big receiver, Brian Edwards, in a man-to-man -man situation. They went double move and a big touchdown. From his pressure, he's trying to throw the ball away over to his sideline move. Kwamu's length turns it into a pick six. And then when they needed it the most, Jake Fromm and this offense delivered a beautiful touchdown pass to Robertson. South Carolina goes on a drive. They attempt a field goal. Comes up short and wide right. And Georgia had a chance, totally mismanaged the end of the football game, and ends up trying a Hail Mary, I think. Well, you made a great point while we were away about what might have been going through Kirby Smart's mind considering his coaching history. Yeah, I mean, we remember the kick six, Alabama-Auburn. When Alabama goes to attempt a game-winning field goal, and it's returned back for the touchdown. Curry Smart was a defensive coordinator at Alabama. And I wonder if that was in the back of his mind, a fear of kicking that, attempting that kick, coming up short in a return. Instead, his offense begins overtime. DeAndre Swift keeps the pile moving. It's not a four-yard game. Georgia bringing Swift out and cooking. It's almost like if you're Georgia and you're a play call, it's like, okay, what, what have we done well today? What, what do I feel like I can get to? I love the fact that they're in this bunch set up here because if South Carolina is going to play some man coverage, it gives you a chance to have runners, picks, and people running away from coverage. And it's a hat trick for Israel Mokwamu. You'll see the throw from Fromm. It's right where it needs to be. Pop 
rips off Simmons' hands and intensely depicts. We've talked about Mukwamu's length. That six foot four frame comes in to play again. The arm length to go secure that ball for the pick. And now South Carolina has a huge opportunity. And they set up Parker White to try and win the game. Dowdle. Inside the 25, just inside the 22 yard line. If I'm South Carolina, as we see Ryan Malinsky, who's such an important part of this football team, if I'm South Carolina, the ball's not going in the air. It is going to be three runs. I'm never going to put the ball at risk, and we're going to attempt a field goal. Dowdle. Inside of 20, down to about the 17-yard line. A couple of yards shy of a first down. From right here, you're only looking at about a 35-yard field goal. And right now, it's about as a play caller for South Carolina. Where does Parker White like the football? Is he a left hash kicker? Is he a middle of the field kicker or right hash kicker? So that's the only thing that matters on this play call is keeping the football where your kicker likes it. Your players need to know it, you need to know it as a play caller. And they're gonna try to put it in between the hash marks. Cattle comes up a yard short. Here comes Parker White to try and win it for South Carolina. Will a timeout be called by Georgia? trying to ice her. Kirby Smart heading down next to the officials. There's the timeout. South Carolina, Will Muschamp, they knew they had to take the ball away today to have a chance. Well, they have done that, and it's mostly been this guy. Mukwamu's been outstanding. The first one is Jake Fromm trying to throw that ball away. I'll say it again. The length by Mukwamu allows that interception. Then he's getting physical with Landers. And again, the length that leads to the pick. And this one's kind of gifted to him. Right off Simmons' hands. He's in the right place at the right time. The football found. Israel Mukwamu today, turnovers had held this team back. It's been the story of the football game for South Carolina defensively. Parker White has not missed this season inside of 50 yards. He's eight for eight. This one from 33 to try and win it. Right over the uh, right in the gun. We play up. What could possibly happen next? We'll find out when we come back. Parker White's first miss from under 50 yards this season. A crushing blow for Ryan Alinsky and the Gamecocks. A reverse to Brian Edwards as we start over town number two. So immediately, South Carolina has to put a missed 33-yard field goal behind them, put their offense right back on the field, and continue with overtime. Come out with a little bit of a gadget play against this Georgia defense. Right, a reverse to Brian Edwards, gets them in a really good second down situation. And the challenge for Georgia right now is, how risky do you want to get? How much are you willing to expose your back end on number 89, Brian Edwards, but commit to stopping that run. Joiner out of the pocket. Stays on his feet. Hit out of bounds as well. Very close to the first down. He is up with a little limp.
We've had some, and, well, and we've had some of these in the second half. And I've talked to you, Bob, about I don't like their play call. This ball should not go in the air. You're a football team that is committed to running the football. I'm going to get double pullers. I'm going to pin with my tight ends. And I'm going to give the carry on Jordan the option to give it or keep it. Timeout called by Will Muschamp. So the Gamecocks will use the only timeout they have in overtime number two. And there's a very good chance Parker White's going to find himself right back out there. Now instead of a game-winning kick, just needing a kick to try and put his team on top. You have to have amnesia hmm. across the board in college football overtime because it just changes so quickly. Let's go back to Matt. Okay, Bob, Deck and Anna to OU in Texas. Jalen Hurts out of the shotgun, takes it in right up the gut. Sooners up 34-20, Texas driving late in the fourth. And coming up next after this side of the game, Austin Kendall and West Virginia set to host Iowa State. That's coming up right here on ESPN, guys. Well, Matt, we have had a low-scoring thriller between the hedges. Bob Schuza, Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams, overtime number two. It's hard on you to get back, Coach, in overtime to get Curry Smart off the field. The ball's going to get right and right there. Look at all that weight that South Carolina's got up on the line of scrimmage. Extra offensive lineman, Joyner changing the play. Dowdle hit behind the line. Second effort. Did he get there? It looks like he's short. Now here's a snap decision you have to make if you're Will Muschamp. Your kicker just missed. It's fourth down and a foot. Would you go for it? I wouldn't. I would kick the field goal here. He's going for it. He's out of timeout, so they have to make a decision quickly or risk a delay of game. Already down to 13 on the play clock. They're still looking over to the sideline and can't get a play call. Seven to go. They have to get lined up. Take the delay and kick the field goal. Well, they're going to get bailed out. Kirby Smart called a timeout on defense. Very interesting. And now they will have a chance to go over and talk things over. And I don't think South Carolina was ever going to run a play. I think they were just going to get up there, try to draw Georgia off sides, and be willing to take the five-yard penalty and kick the field goal. Look at Kirby Smart at the bottom of the screen right here as he goes down to this referee. Just as South Carolina gets set, that, time, time, that timeout came from Coach Smart. And listen, if you don't feel good about it defensively, you use the timeout and you make sure your team is right in that situation. I just don't think South Carolina is ever going to call one. Well, is it a hard count again? Because they're leaving their offense on the field. Parker Weiss still over on sideline. Yeah, I mean. I'm not doing a hard count here, no. If I'm putting my offense out on the field, it's because I want to go get a first down. I'm not going to get tricky here and hurt myself. I've got six, seven big bodies on the field. I talked about the pin and pull. You just tried to run at Georgia and it, Georgia and it didn't work. Utilize the carry and Jordan's athleticism. I'll give it to Dowdle. He's got the first down, spins inside 10. Down to about the eight-yard line, first and goal. And they went to the pin and pull to the right side of the offensive line. Collapsed Georgia's. They pulled the two guys around, created a huge hole, and Dowdle followed it. I guess Will Muschamp feels, I gave my kicker one chance. I'm going to trust my offense now. Fabian Feaster, the Clemson transfer. To the six yard line. Just telling you, if South Carolina wants to, you could run a very similar formation, a very similar play, 
and Joyner is going to be a better athlete with more speed than the guy that is playing in between handoff and quarterback responsibilities. It's there if South Carolina sees it and wants it. Flags down. Feast was down. Shot at the six yard line. Brought down by J.R. Reed. And that flag thrown at the line of scrimmage right at the snap. Offside, defense number 76. After the digits of the goal, pick it down, second down. Yeah, I don't think Michael Carter jumped off sides. He was lined up on. See how the flag came out super early from that official? He was already lined up in that neutral zone. Easy call for the official. Well, that will put the ball at the three-yard line and give the game cost the down back. Second down and goal at the three. One-on-one yeah, -on -one up here with your big-time SEC receiver. They were on the option. Dowdle turns the corner. Can't get to the pylon. Aziz Ojolari drove him out. It'll be third down and goal. They'll mark it at a two. I think if you're Georgia defensively, I said this a lot. I'm not giving Brian Edwards a chance to catch this football one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to give him some help. I'll play man-to-man, -man, everybody else across the board. And if you're South Carolina, I want to see you get to carry on Joyner on the edge. Down a blown up in the backfield. Tyler Clark rifles through. And now they have no choice but to try the field goal. Watch Clark right here. Watch how he gets skinny on the snap of the ball. Dip the shoulder, get skinny, beat the guard off the, the snap. What a huge play. What a huge series of plays for Tyler Clark. And now another short-range try for Parker White. And this one's down the middle. So now Georgia can win the game with a touchdown. They get their opportunity in overtime number two. It's hard to get skinny with three bills. Mm. He just found a way. Watch him just get skinny. 300 pound senior beat the guard off the snap. And he almost takes the hand off. He was the guy who made the stop on the third down before South Carolina went forward on fourth down. You know what that tells me? He knew to snap. He, he's like, okay, I know the snap. I've got their cadence, whatever their rhythm is, and I can time this. And sometimes you got to bet on yourself. Bro. Tape study, your experience, bet on yourself. And that told me Tyler Clark knew it. All right, Jake, from. It's right there for Georgia. A touchdown wins it. DeAndre Swift hit at the line again by T.J. Bronson. The first player that Will Muschamp signed when he got the job at South Carolina makes another play for him. Yeah, Brunson's speed actually allows him to make that play. He kind of backdoor Trey Hill. He saw front side. Okay, my defensive line's got it. I can kind of use my athleticism. Anticipate the cutback by Swift, and he's right there for the tackle. I like the stack split out of Georgia at the bottom of the screen. Bootleg for Fromm. Middle screen bobbled. And it falls incomplete. Charlie Warner had it. And if that one stays in the air, South Carolina could have won the game with a takeaway. Now it's third down and ten. Georgia offensively. South Carolina's kind of playing in between here. Are we going to give you zone or are we going to give you man? You've got to give Jake Fromm one side of the field. This is your zone view. One side of the field. This is your man here. They've got man to man across the board. You have to find your matchup. Blitz coming. Fromm's going to take a shot towards the end zone. Incomplete. Demetrius Robertson.
Got turned around. Crowd looking for a call. Jamie Robinson was there in coverage. So here comes Rocket Ship. This is good coverage by Robinson. There's no PI there. You'd like a little bit firmer ball by Jake Fromm, but Robertson just adjusted a little bit better. That's a touchdown on the front pile. So now Rodrigo Blankenship from 42 to try and extend the game. He pulled it! Unbelievable! South Carolina wins! An historic win for South Carolina. Their first against a top five team, as you can see, in quite a while. And Allison is down there with a the head coach who is enjoying Allison this win. Some big and well deserved hugs for Coach Mostamp. Coach, first of all, what is going through your mind with Lincoln Chip sales that day? I heard for him. You know, I just, you don't want it to end in that fashion. Georgia's got a great team, well coached, a bunch of good players, and just, uh, you know, I'm happy for our guys. It's a heck of a game, and I hate anyone had to lose the game. You were on the other side, though, of that missed field goal in overtime when you guys missed one as well. Yeah. What was going through your mind? I, our guys will keep fighting their ass off. This is all the day to be a game pack, isn't it? You know, isn't it awesome? What was required of your team to come on the road without your starting quarterback for much of the second half and win? Uh, well, we lose Jake in the early season. We lose Ryan to carry on. His halfway practicing because of the hamstring. It says a lot about the culture of our program, the leadership of our program, the type of players we have in our program, and the future of our program. What does it mean to you and to this program to get it this top five? thing to me. I'm mad for our kids. <laughs> Thanks, Will. It means something to him. How about the end of this one, Dan? This is a team that came in here with the mission, right? And they wanted to get physical with Georgia. They wanted to play their style, put the game on their terms. Ryan Holinsky battled and played so well early on, but they did it shorthanded. And it's a little bit emblematic of the coach, right? Tough, confident, not scared, won't back down. And they came in to Sanford Stadium, and today we're the better football team. Heartbreak for the dogs. A celebration for the Gamecocks. And maybe the most unlikely finish that we could have imagined. And it's Rodrigo Blankenship, who has been Mr. Icewater in his Georgia career. Missing one from well inside this normally his comfortable range. But we can both agree, and hopefully everyone watching at home, South Carolina deserved to win the football game, right? They gave, in many ways, Georgia chances, and they never capitalized on them. And the team that played better and I would argue played harder and did a little things better on the football game today. Isn't that the coach that said it doesn't mean much to him, just means a lot to his kids? <laughs> I think it means plenty to him. And there's the hero, Israel Makwabu. Three interceptions, including a pick six. And South Carolina heads home a winner. For Allison Williams and Dan Orlovsky, I'm Bob Schuster. Hope for the rest of the day is just as exciting. So long from Athens. Time to go back to the studio. College football scoreboard. Wow, what a finish out there.